But anyway, she said today, she goes, did you hear about the vaccine? They, they might be starting up in like middle of December. And I'm like, yeah, I saw Pence announced that. And she goes, yeah. mm. <laughs> it's yeah, so yeah, easy yeah, to get yeah, those yeah, people. Yeah. yeah, it's like, it's really impressive that the Trump administration got that vaccine out so quick. <laughs> I love doing <laughs> it. <laughs> and people are like, you right wing? I'm like, no, I'm just anti you. Yeah, that's really it. Yeah. That's really it. Although I have admitted this before. It does. I don't know. I like, I like the, maybe because it's just where I'm from, but I like the right wing people more as people. In, in, our, in our career, yeah. you and I, who genuinely has fucked with my life personally the most has been the left. So Hi, everybody. Welcome to Ari Shafir's Skeptic Tank Podcast. We're live on stereo. This is the very first live introduction for Ari Shafir's Skeptic Tank. Um, so the way we're going to do it is this. For, well, first of all, let me tell you a little about my podcast. I, 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 generally, I get a topic. You guys know if you listen. I get a topic, and then I try to like really uncover that topic with some, with some guests. But I, I, I can't keep... I can't keep doing these fucking super serial ones every time. I can't keep getting a, a fucking transgender lady or a dude who's like, uh, thinks he's gonna send his parents to hell if he blinks too many times when he fucking washes his hands. <laughs> or like, uh, I don't know, what else do I get on this podcast? Pedophile, that's a dream. That one has not gotten here yet, but one day soon, I will get a pedophile. Are they still around? Are pedophiles still a thing or do they kind of Give way for Black Lives Matter. Dude, if you, okay. Is it, you remember how Black Lives Matter started and then Black Trans Lives Matter is like, nah, we'll take over from here. How about Black Trans Child Molested Lives Matter? Does anyone matter more than them? Okay, so guys, here's what's gonna happen. So generally I get a topic and then I uncover it with a fucking, you know, a guest, like you're, like you're used to. But this time, for I don't know what reason, I just had a title in my head. And the title was Shane and Shafir Shit on Shit. So that's this episode. I got my friend Shane Gillis. Um, we like shitting on things. Like, I, I don't, I don't know. It's just like fun. So comedians love, this is where we get in trouble, by the way, too. Comedians love talking shit. We, we do it. And then when we do podcasts, it's like we're still talking to our friends, and so then we lose ourselves. We forget that, like, hey, 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 Ari, 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 no, 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 this is, uh, this is recorded. Because you just forget what you're doing. I mean, you guys, you listen to the fucking, you listen to the podcast, you know. And if you're listening today, we are on Stereo, podcasting directly to the people. Thank you, Stereo, for sponsoring this podcast. Um, so we just talk shit, and it's always so fun. Like, who's more bitter than comics? None of us are where we want to be. None of us. Even Gary Shanley used to be upset that he wasn't uh, fucking Seinfeld. Not that he wasn't fucking Seinfeld, you know, but that he wasn't Seinfeld. That's what I heard. That's what Mitzi used to say. He's too jealous. He's upset that he's not Seinfeld. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, Gary Shanley's had a good career. How's he doing now? I haven't, I haven't heard from him in a while. So, um, so I just said, Shane, let's shit on things. I mean, that's all we do anyway, at the, the, the stand, at whatever else. We just shit on things. Um, so you guys, if you're listening on stereo, uh, live right now, do me a favor. Um, at the end of this, I'm going to uh, listen to some messages that you guys leave. Give me some topics of stuff to shit on. Um, and if, uh, or I don't know, some feedback on what's happening right now. But probably some topics to shit on. So that's all I did. I wrote down some topics for Shane and I to shit on. And so we did, and it's so, it was a fucking fun. We started drinking. Well, he started drinking Trulies, which is like, which is like, what are you, what are you doing exactly? Why are you, why are you drinking Trulies? Is, is your vagina dry? Um, then I get it. If your vagina is dry, for sure drink Trulies. 
Um, but if it's not dry, I don't know. I, you can't really make fun of somebody for fucking their choice in, in whatever. I'm having a blast, by the way. I'm out in the middle of nowhere. Well, not in the middle of nowhere. I'm in the capital city of the middle of nowhere. And uh, I should smoke weed for this. Dude, the weed here is so strong. I mean, I've never, I've never had weed this strong. I'm not even joking. It was psychedelic. I was sitting on the back porch in the woods at this place I rented with, with, with Bandit, my dog, sitting on my lap, and I'm staring out of the woods, like sunset through the, through the trees. And like, I'm seeing lines. I've never like tripped on weed before. Have you? Whoever's listening right now on, on stereo, we're live on stereo. Um, have you guys ever tripped on weed? I will do it when I have flashbacks on acid. Like the next day after I take acid, I remember being at UFC and, and smoking, like, you know, in the smoking area. Did they used to have a smoking area at Oakland Coliseum? Um, but then they did away with it because you can't smoke in California. You can't smoke uh, cigarettes in California, anywhere. Please tell me I'm recording this. I am. Uh, you can't smoke weed anywhere in California. So they're like, hey, this, you can't use this for cigarette smoking. And me and Duncan Trussell were out there. And I asked the guy, I was like, the guy was like, hey, no smoking out here. I think Duncan was smoking back then. I think I was too. And he was like, hey, no smoking. We're at a UFC. And uh, we're like, what about weed? And he goes, it's a medical state. <laughs> so no smoking cigarettes. But absolutely, yes, smoking. At Oakland Coliseum. No, not Oakland Coliseum. Wherever the fucking... Uh, Warriors played before the team abandoned the city that supported them. What the fuck is that? They fucking supported you forever and you're like, no, better stadium or cross town San Francisco. So most people don't understand the difference between San Francisco and Oakland. You're like sister cities. It's not. Oakland's the fucking, lives in the shadow of San Fran. They're way more of a homer town. Nobody moves to Oakland. People move to San Francisco to like be trendy. Oakland is a fucking homer town. And they suck in support of the Warriors the whole fucking time. And now they're good and they take off. Fuck that. St uh, Steph Curry took out a billboard with him just like walking away and just said, uh, thank you, Oakland, for everything. It, may it almost made me cry. It almost made me cry. You know what does make you cry? Getting punched in the fucking nuts. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, so the weed here is fucking crazy. Like, I'm, I'm at the point where I'm like, I can't drive on it. And I'm sure some of you fucking straight edge people are like, you should never drive on weed. <laughs> yeah, okay. Joey Diaz used to say that back when weed was like still kind of illegal in California. He goes, the only way you'll get caught is if you have it in the car. Don't have it in the car. He goes, oh, you don't have it in the car, do you? Do you, dog? And I was like, oh, Joey, I pretty much only smoke in the car. It helps traffic lights go by faster. Otherwise, what are you gonna do? Play with the radio? There's already a song on. Um, so it's fucking strong here. And then my friends, uh, somebody was, I told him how strong it was and he was like, well, maybe it's laced with something. And I'm like, yeah, probably, but that's not a bad thing. When did being laced, uh, that's, you know, like what's the issue there? Why, why is that even a problem? Dude, is in China. How long is this? 9.56. I wonder how long, I've never done a live fucking intro outro before. If you're just tuning in, we are live, coast to coast, and across the world on stereo app. Um, write in some questions, or uh, not write in, leave me a message. Um, so I was in China, and they said they had hash there. They don't, so they have, it's like strict drug laws, but they don't really care about the drugs that um, white people do. They only care about the drugs that uh, Chinese people do. And if you're like, well, there's also black people, right? Uh, the answer is not really, no, not in China. It's pretty much the only expats are white expats. Uh, occasionally Koreans. But um, yeah, they don't care about weed. They don't know what it smells like because it's so, none of the Asians, none of the Chinese usually use it. So they hate opium. If you try to bring opium in, they'll fucking, they might like put you in jail. Um, Coke, from what I understand, they'll kick you out. Don't try to bring it in, but if you, have, if you get caught with it there, they'll kick you out. But I told the story before, the Beijing, there was a Beijing comic, or someone in the Beijing comedy scene, maybe a girlfriend or something, she got caught with Coke, and they kicked her out of China. And they stamped her passport, never allowed to return to China, ever. 
put on a plane back to America. She landed in New York City, JFK International Airport, went home, got a steamer from her mom's closet, steamed that stamp out, got on a flight back to China the next day, and it, <laughs> it was still over there two years later. <laughs> they didn't know anything online. Right, when a country outlaws Google, they don't fucking search your name. Because the people at the border are gonna be like, oh, I've searched like, dude, it would've been so easy to smuggle weed over the border in China. Because it's punishable by death, they just didn't care. Metzger was like, I should take some. I'm like, don't take the chance. And he goes, would you have gotten caught? I'm like, no, I would not have gotten caught, but don't take the chance. And I don't know if he did or not. Anyway, in China, they said the hash is up to 17% shoe polish. It gets you there, though. That shoe polish will fucking get you there, dude. For real, dog. Um, unplug the accessory. Okay, using too much power. Oh, no! Um, so anyway, so this is what me and Shane did uh, for this episode. Boom. We just shit on things. I got like four or five topics. I don't know why I'm yelling. I got like four, because you know why I'm yelling? I just started doing the fucking video stuff. So, I, if I see the camera too far away, I feel like I have to raise my voice. I forget that I have a fucking microphone right in front of me. Uh, I'm an idiot. I'm kind of an idiot. Um, there we... Anyway, uh, here we go. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh, so um, I just wrote a couple topics down and we started drinking and I'm like, let's just shit on things. And it was fun. I kind of want to do more of these. I really do. And at the end, we were, like, he, was, he was drunk and I was drunk. And, um, and I was like, wanna do a Patreon? So we just did a Patreon um, together. One of the arrest stories. Um, Patreon.com slash Ari Shafir. That's mine. And, um, yeah, I don't know, it was just fun. Dude, as I'm gone, it's just like tough to, by the way, next week I've got a story of, I got a story for you. Joe Rogan's gonna be on next week's episode. Um, so subscribe and look forward to that. Wait, I had a story for you and then I fucking forgot it. It's tough here, I don't know the language and I'm trying to learn it, but like, you make mistakes. It's pretty fucking cool. You make mistakes. So like, I, I got a cigar, I went to get a cigar. My favorite cigar, expensive. Um, there's all these taxes, I guess, on Cuban cigars. So I went to get this, this you know, you can't really find them in America, but the Hoyo Epicure Numerous Tris. Here it is. Let me cover this up so you don't know what it is. But uh, that's it. I had it once in Colombia, and I fucking loved it. The dude, the Venezuelan dude at the, um, at the what's it called? Cigar shop. Um, he was like, nah, fuck those Cohibas, dude. It's all about the Epicure, the Hoya. I got it. Loved it. Bobby Kelly, I think it's his favorite cigar, too. Um, it smokes so fucking smooth. But <sighs> it was like 30 bucks here. <laughs> so I got three, but like, it's too much. In fucking Colombia, it was way cheaper. Even at the airport, it was like 15 or 18. Whatever. But like here or there, you got to treat yourself. Um, oh, so I'm at the, and I wanted to get one of those um, uh, moisture bags to put in like, you know, my travel humidor. Uh, it's just like a four pack. But so you ask the guy, you're like, uh, TNS Agua, which means like, do you have water? And, and then he was like, pretty much like, no, nah, we don't sell that dog. <laughs> I'm like, no, 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 no. I mean like, tienes agua para la cigarros. And he goes, oh, okay. And he gets me this like, what was I gonna say? This like, um, whole like humidifier kit. And I'm like, no, 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 no. And then I was like, it's one of those pouches. So I'm like, what's pouch? Bag, I know the word for bag. And I'm like, uh, Bolsa, and it might be bolsa, but I don't know. Like bolsa uh, para agua, para um, las cigarros. So he gave me a Ziploc. It's not what I wanted. But at some point you just go, yeah, sure. But, you know, fucking fine. 
Dude, you ever go to a foreign country and then they, um, they, uh, <laughs> are you guys leaving messages by the way? Um, if you don't know, uh, tap, what are they gonna say? Uh, send me an audio message, that's what you want. Send me an audio message here on stereo and then um, hit send. Now let's hit some of these messages. Yeah, I'm gonna get to it in a little minute. But send me some messages, of stuff to shit on so I can just riff and shit on things. This is fun. Um, wait, what was I just gonna say? We've got messages. Okay, this is it, you guys are doing it. I wanna test one and then from there, I'll just riff a little bit. Here, I'm gonna just. Play. I hope this isn't a fucking shitty one. Here we go. Speaking of white people drugs, why does Ari's bitmoji look like Val Kilmer from The Prince of Egypt? Jeez, holy Jewish. Terrible message. <laughs> I love when it's when you finish a joke like that guy just did, and then you go. You can't just let it sit there because it's not getting a response. So you have to add in, geez, holy Moses, fucking dummy. Um, I don't know how to do a fucking bitmoji, you fucking idiot. It's not my life. I actually would like to have a skill of doing that. Becky made a bitmoji and it looks exactly like her. Marissa did one, it looks exactly like her. I, I don't know. I don't know how to do my eyes right. I don't see myself that way. There's no, when you're doing bitmojis, there's no like setting for intelligence. That's what separates me. That when people see me, they, they see my fucking intelligence. You, they see your fucking birthmark. With me, they see a fucking massive education system that runs rampant in my community. It's genetic. Jews are smart. Um, I gotta, I, for the songs, I gotta have uh, the Ugly Kid Joe song. I hate everything about you. I don't know. I remember that when I was in high school. I used to listen to that in the car on the way, on the way to school. I don't know how it got big. Ugly Kid Joe is the name of the band. If you don't know, look it up. It's just, it's just them rant. They're kind of like Helmet, I guess, or like an offshoot of them. And they're just ranting about shit they hate. <laughs> That's what me and Shane did for this whole episode. Oh, it's so good. Oh, I got 12 messages now. Guys, this stereo app is kind of cool. I'm gonna do three, including this one, four of the next like five or four of the next six are gonna be uh, these live uh, intro outros. And it's kind of cool. Thank you, Stereo, for sponsoring it. Uh, it's gross. Um, do you ever find food in your mouth and, and you have no memory of having chewed it? Um, no, me neither. Let's see. I hate everything about you. If Shane Gillis, if you don't know, he has his own podcast called Matt and Shane's Secret Podcast that you should listen to. Uh, he's got his own Patreon where he makes all his money and then he doesn't, he doesn't do ads the way I do for stereo app. Um, let's do another message. I kind of like this. This might be lame, but I'm going to keep doing it. Eavesdropper. If she's on mute more than two minutes, you guys are going to get kicked off or she will. You want to know how stupid fucking people are on here? We talk about all kinds of sh <laughs> What is it with Southerners? They just sound dumb. Hold on. Come on, dude. Give me a good topic. James Roll. Hey, what's up, man? It's James here. Hey, James. Um, we're going to get on. If you want to ask anything about tech, I'm here to talk to you. Um, sorry, I just started a new YouTube channel, and uh, I'm a developer, and I want to talk tech and see uh, what you're into, man. So let me know if you're down for that. Did I just get hit on? Did James Roll just hit on me and say, let's have a fucking relationship over tech? It's possible that is what happened. Dude, I got hit on in um, Myanmar. Did I tell you guys this? And then we'll start the episode in a second. Um, we're live on stereo, by the way. Um, So I'm walking my first day in Myanmar, in Yangon, and I got uh, 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 some tips, some bars to go to from my, um, what's the architect friend who used to live there? Childress, William Childress. I did a podcast with him. Jesu uh, Tunbade was the name of the podcast, which is, I think, thank you in uh, Burmese. Um, but he, uh, he gave me a tip of bar. So I was like, oh, I got nothing to do. My first night, I was too scared to talk to people at the hostel. 
Uh, I cannot wait to go travel again. What are you talking about? You're currently traveling. <sighs> um, anyway, so I'm walking to this bar. I think bar 50, 50, 50, so, something like that. And I'm walking past this, this giant temple, the gold temple. I kind of walk past, they light it up at night. You should look up pictures. Um, and I'm walking past and some guy's like, hello, like he's passing me, he's like, hello. And I'm like, uh, hey, uh, how you doing? Speaks broken English, but good enough. And I'm like, I'll, you know, talk to somebody. I'm headed to this bar where some expats are. I'm more comfortable with expats. I'm more comfortable talking to people traveling in a place than talking to people who actually live there. English is the problem. I'm fine talking to fucking Scottish people when I'm in Scotland, you know? Um, but when I'm in Cambodia, I'd way rather talk to a fucking Scottish person or a fucking Irish person or an American than a Cambodian. Um, you know what's fun though in Cambodia? Go to one of those sex clubs where they play fucking 80s music and then all the old sex pats, all the 60 year olds, they're just there to fuck. They're either fucking like 25 year old Cambodians uh, or, or some fucking 18 year old Cambodian dudes or whatever. But they like to go to a place where nobody fucking judges them and they can listen to a cover plan playing uh, the cranberries over there and fucking loving it. It's like beach life over there, but for fucking. Um, but anyway, so I'm walking and some guy, uh, he's like, hey, how are you? I'm like, good. He's like, um, can I talk to you? And I was like, yeah, fuck it. Let, let's, sure. And he's like, uh, what's your name? Where are you from? I'm like, Ari Shafir. My name is uh, Ari. I, 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 uh, I'm from the United States of America. He's like, oh, that's so cool. How long are you here for? I'm like, I don't know. I'll, I'll figure it out. He goes, well, if you need anything, um, here's my number. Give me a call. And he took out a piece of paper. His number was already written on it. And he handed it to me. And I was like, oh, thanks, man. OK, that's cool. He told me his name, tra 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 Trajectory, whatever his name was. Let's call it Trajectory. And, um, and so Trajectory and I were talking for like two minutes and then he goes, uh, uh, I have a question for you. I'm like, okay, Trajectory, what, what, uh, what's your question? And he goes, uh, do you want to fuck? And I, I was like, I mean, it catches you out of the blue. <laughs> More for a dude than a woman. I got to expect a woman like has always on the ready. Jen Kirkman used to do a bit about it, how like every one of her guy friends at some point she has to treat like a dog and go like, no, no. Like she sees them about to hit on her and she goes, no, we're just friends. So like, they're like ready for guys to hit on them when, when it's not like expected. But I, dude, straight dudes are not ready for that. And I was not ready for that. Um, and so, uh, what was I gonna say? So, um, yeah, I was like, no, no, thanks. I, I don't, you know, no offense. I just, I, I, I don't want to fuck. Pulse. And, uh, and he goes, oh, okay. And it was just kind of awkward. It was, a, it was a bold move on his part. And then he was like, w w you want to hang out and just talk and be friends? And I was like, oh, no, dude, that ship has sailed. <laughs> you can't pull back from do you want to fuck <laughs> to like, <laughs> let's see what we have in common. Also, it's not like you went too fast. I was just never interested. It wasn't gonna happen. You know why? Because I don't fuck foreign dudes. Um, but later, I think the next day, the day after, I reached into the, whatever pants I was wearing that day and I, I found his number again. And then you know what struck me? He already had his number written down on a piece of paper. He didn't pass by and say, hey, I'd love to hang out, here's my number, and write it down. I think he couldn't afford business cards. I think he wrote his phone number down on a bunch of pieces of paper and was just looking for people. I don't know if he had a thing for foreigners or I wandered through the fucking gay part of town where people stroll for dick. I got hit on hard three times in Southeast Asia. One time at the fucking rooster fights, at the Futumanu. Some guy's like, uh, where do you stay? I'm like, at, at this hostel. And he's like, uh, I want to stay there. Can I stay there? I'm like, I'm, yeah, I mean, they, it wasn't full. I kind of half knew what he was doing, but I wasn't like positive. I wasn't, well, I'm like, it's not, not every bed's full. And he's like, but I want to stay with you. And I'm like, 
Yeah, I mean, I, 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 pay, I pay the two extra bucks for the air conditioned room. You could, you could probably stay in that room. I don't think there's anybody in it, but you know, I, I don't know. I haven't been there. Maybe somebody else checked in. There's four, two bunk beds, so it's four beds total. And he's like, but I want to sleep with you. And I was like, uh, he wouldn't say it outright like the, like the Myanmar guy. I want to fuck. But I was like, no, nah, it's a pretty much a single. <laughs> Do I have gay face? Um, anyway, on this episode, Shane and I just shit on things. Shane is fun. I have a problem where I sometimes don't want to shit on people I know. Shane does not have that issue at all. Uh, especially if someone has wronged him. He is like, nah, fuck that, we're going for it. Um, and so he's a great guy to talk shit with, like any comic. He's a great guy to talk shit with and he'll fucking go for it. So we had a fucking great time. Um, so ladies and gentlemen, let's start the episode. Uh, if you're listening live on stereo right now, stay with me. I'm gonna introduce the episode and then I'm gonna do the outro and then we're gonna take some of these fucking calls and let's, let's riff a little bit, that'll be fun. Let's see how long we'll go. This will be cool. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, and tune in next week for Rogan. And then after that, we got like, a, dude, it's been a good run for podcasts. Like for real, a good run. Like last like four or five or six of them, I, I've had, I'm really proud of them. Go back and listen to them. Like, can you guys tell people about this podcast? Like spread the word a little bit, do me a favor. Tweet out to your friend, if you're still on Twitter, get off Twitter, but tweet out to your friends like, this is a good podcast, you should listen to it. Or Instagram, be like, this is a good episode, or, you know, whatever episode, help, help me out. Um, and thank you, Stereo. Stereo out for sponsoring this, we're listening live on Stereo. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, Ari Shafir Skeptic Tank, episode 409. Shane and Shafir shit on shit <laughs> with Shane Gillis. Starts now. How you doing, buddy? Where are you? I'm in Philly now. I'm in Philly oh. right now. Uh, just got back from Kansas City. Flew in how, last night. How was it? That's one disgusting town. It really is, dude. I've never <laughs> been to Kansas City, dude. Kansas City oh, really? stinks. Wait, what club was it? Improv or they still no, have a... There's a place now called the Comedy Club of Kansas City. Was it's it? It's good. It's actually like a pretty ideal room. Did anybody take over the fucking what's his name's room? I don't know. Oh yeah, there's a crazy guy. Yeah, he died though. I think I he think. died. I think he OD'd, which was the right way to go for they him. They tend to, yeah, life. they tend to do that. <laughs> yeah, I went there once and he wasn't there. I'm like, where is he? And they're like, he's in Costa Rica, fucking hookers and bring him back blow. I was like, great. I don't <laughs> this guy's mind. got it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it was, yeah, I went to, there's nothing to do. I went to the World War One Museum. That was fine. What a fucking chump cool. museum once you've had World War Two. Yeah, it really is. It's like, yeah, they just kind of fucking sat in trenches for three years. Did you see 1917? I did. It was fucking badass. I, I've, I was on a big World War One kick for a while because of uh, Dan Carlin's. He did a hardcore history on World War One. Oh, really? Series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It fired me up because I was always a World War Two guy. Yeah, sure. And then when you learn about World War One, you're like, holy shit, dude, that was truly horrific. Yeah, they didn't have even like, I think World War Two by then it was like, ah, we took over Hitler's lair. We can like have a, fuck, a good two weeks here. Yeah. It's really nice, you know, but yeah, well, they, one of yeah. ours, our World War Two was nice compared to what everybody did in World War One. Why? Ours, ours was the Western, not, not our, the Pacific theater. That was rough. Now I'm speaking for all the guys who stormed Normandy. It was pretty easy. Wait, that was one. <laughs> that was two. No, no, that was two. Uh, yeah. Wait, and the Pacific one was totally, if you're on a ship, who gives a no, fuck? No, Pacific one, the Marines were, they had a negative experience. In what way? The food? It was like the b baton <laughs> the death sushi march. Wasn't good. <laughs> they got no. They got like beheaded and shit. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, that's negative, <laughs> dude. It must have. They didn't have as much fun. The first kamikaze. What you must have been like? Ah, what the, this guy's flying low? Hey, what's he? <laughs> yeah, the first couple what's must have been just been like doing. Must have been like nine right eleven. The last second, you're like, ah, oh, not good move. <laughs> it must have. It literally must have been like nine eleven, where you're like the first one. You were probably like, that was a mistake. Yeah. Somehow that guy fucked up. 
They fucked. And then the, and then the second <laughs> one, you're like, like tower right, one. We're like, this who's is the real. pilot? Do they? <laughs> yeah. Do they? And the second one, like, the odds of this being an accident are pretty slim, right? <laughs> no, no way. Yeah. I wonder who, if anybody, like, held out hope for a minute. Was like for an accident. Another guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then when the ones are going to the Pentagon, when they were like, uh, oh no, the Pentagon hit. What was the last one? White House, the one they brought down. I don't know. The Flight 93. Yeah. Let's roll. Yeah, that was the fucking that was, fakest story in the world. <laughs> yeah, like, and the debris gone. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. They cleaned it up X Files style. It never, never existed. Like what? Yeah. Uh, yeah, are we we're, recording or are we just talking nine eleven? Yeah, we're, uh, I don't know. Yeah, we're recording. <laughs> right, I'm down. Hey, do, you have a, do you have a studio? Where do you? Where are you in Philadelphia? Do you have two uh, homes? This is actually where we used to record. Yeah, I used to live here. This is my apartment in Philly. So we can- used to record me and Matt's podcast, Matt and Shane's Secret Podcast, in here. Now my friends use it to record You Fucked It, which is also a fun podcast. Do you have a network? Yeah, no, we don't. Oh. No. I just send. We just, we're all, we all support each other. That's cool. What, the Philadelphia yeah. scene? Mm-hmm. That's cool. Yeah, it's nice. They're all, we're all friends. Um, but yeah, I used to live here. So now I record, we record our podcast here. So I always I sleep on a couch in Philadelphia once a week to come down and do it. Yeah, that's cool. Does, does Matt ever come up? No, no. <laughs> Why? No. I, I, Occasionally, never, he's not like I twice. I've seen him twice ever in New York. Yeah. yeah, he never, he never, he never. Well, he's got a wife and a kid now, and I don't. Ooh. I have a Ooh. car. Yeah, he's yeah. How old is this kid? That fuck it, dude. Every time I hear somebody uh, yeah. having a kid, I'm just like, I feel sorry for them. Yeah, that's what I, I, I he know. Called me, plan it. He called me and told her, told me she was pregnant, and I was like, oh fuck, dude, oh no. Like I was like, oh no, that's terrible. And he was like, no, it's we're gonna get married. I was like, oh, <laughs> dude. Rogan told me the same thing. We were playing pool. He's like, my chick's pregnant. And I was like, well, what are you gonna? How are you gonna hit you, you gonna kill it, right? <laughs> you're, gonna, you're gonna kill that baby. <laughs> what method are you gonna use to kill it? Because obviously yeah. that is what the outcome will be. <laughs> baby murder. Yeah, he's like, no, yeah, I think I'm like, gonna do it. It's funny to get that news and just be like, damn, you have to kill a kid, huh? Like that's the first <laughs> thing you think of. You're like, well, I guess you're gonna have to murder a kid. I'm sorry. That's that's the feeling. That's why you're sad. You're like, damn, dude, I can't believe you're gonna have to sin it's against God like this. It's a process. She's yeah. she's gonna she's gonna be emotional. I feel sorry for you. Oh. <laughs> Do it quick before she change before the hormones make her change her mind. You ever paid they for will. it? <laughs> no, I haven't. Yeah, that's one thing I do when people like I, I my chick got pregnant or some chick I banged. I always go like, is it still like four hundred thirty? Or is it like, has it gone up? <laughs> has the <laughs> price gone it? up? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, um, I can't say who anymore because I realized it was wrong, but I, I, I mentioned it to Mitzi Shore, this comedy store owner, that I got a you chick named, pregnant. Wait, you just told her the girl? No, I told her that I got a chick pregnant. Oh, okay. And she goes, and she goes, uh, she goes, how much was it? <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, it's 400. And she goes, Oh, that's how, and I can't, I'll tell you off air who it was, but she goes, oh, that's how much so-and-so's was when I paid for his abortion. Damn. Yeah. That's pretty great. <laughs> yeah, it was. I was like, what? That's so cool. Yeah, no wonder everybody, no wonder she's getting fucking documentaries. Yeah. <laughs> she right. helps you guys she, murder everybody. That's right. She goes, it's going to hold you back. <laughs> Man, I try to get Lewis to kill his kids so, for so long. Really? I mean, that's, Beatrice, it took her like, a couple of years before she would like talk to me because <laughs> I was very vocal. I'm like, you have got to get rid of this. <laughs> and yeah, it didn't. It, he didn't. I wouldn't have guessed that he was going to be a good dad. No way. Yeah, I and wouldn't I have was like, that. you're done with comedy. You're, there's no way you can continue if you have a kid on on your way up. Which that's another thing where it's like, is it selfish to take a human life to to make sure Lewis's comedy career continues? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe God Gosh. was like, "This is for the best. Let's get him out of yeah. stand up." <laughs> would you? Would you? Would you kill one? No. You would not. Oh, you would. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't know. It depends. It depends. Obviously, with who. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. But would you? It's like if some skank in Kansas City calls you like four weeks from now and says, "Hey, bad news." Yeah. I would, I would, I don't know. That's a tough one. Trust me. I've thought about it like every single time. I'm like, if this, if this like, you know, yeah. some lady in like Minnesota calls me in a month 
and says like uh, that's a tough I don't know I don't know I, you really I would don't, see what are you religious no it's just a situation it's a serious situation if it depends what she would want to do yeah like if she was like I want to keep it I'm not going to be like what but uh, I I'd have to be like you, you that's your I'm not moving to fucking Kansas City yeah, you would let them know, like, hey, you're on your own on this. This yeah, is, you, this I'm not going to be a good dad. Whatever give you fantasies chunk, you have. <laughs> yeah, you get a chunk of my Patreon. As yeah. long as that lasts. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. You get your, not a big chunk, just one month. You get a sizable yeah. percentage of one month. <laughs> <laughs> and then I am out. Yeah. I love those people who would be like, you'd be a good dad. I'm like, what, what, why, what are you basing that on? I think you'd be a good dad. Why? Um... Uh, you're like uh you're kind of like a nice hippie at heart uh, you know i would run away and continue to be a hippie at heart you would. of course you would <laughs> but if you stuck around i'm saying oh uh, right be, right right if you yeah you'd be a good dad are you wearing a I, waldo hat on purpose to because christmas, people don't know where you are oh it's a christmas hat no i'm just wearing it because i was cold i can take it off but i shaved my head damn oh man so i was just weird. having this conversation what because i'm getting there i'm getting close to losing all my hair I'd go with it for a while. Exactly. Or, That's what I said. I'm going to let test it go. Run. Give it a test run. Shave it bald. I can't just, do just, that. No, just here. Just shave this part. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. Okay, yeah. I did that a few <laughs> times, even when I didn't have to. It's fun. But you really got to shave it a few times and let it bronze up. I feel like I got to lose some weight before I go bald, dude. Yeah, fat bald. <laughs> fat bald is not a great shape. look. Fat bald's rough, dude. That, I would have been <laughs> jacked. the rolls. Yeah, I would have been in shape a while ago if I, it wasn't for my luscious hair. But now that I'm losing my hair, I have to I have to get in shape. God, it's like, it's like what are they doing with this goddamn stem cell shit if we can't rub it on our hair and get full? Right, I'll admit this. I just admitted it to my to Matt and it didn't go well. My friends, my close friends are much meaner. Like you guys are you're mean, but you're not like I don't know, they know me enough that like if I admit to try and do improve myself in any way they're like fucking gay so i got i got a little drunk a keeps a keeps commercial came on it's like a hair pill thing okay and i ordered it i forgot i ordered it then i because i've i've maintained throughout that i look forward to going bald like having like the side thing i think is not a bad look especially for a comedian but when you say you forgot you ordered it do you mean you waited by the door every day and then the mail came no, I've, I've, it's kind of a hack bit, but I have been getting drunk and ordering things. Yeah, I've done it. And, uh, hi, but yeah. Yeah, I, I just totally forgot. Like one day it was cups. That was great. We needed cups, literally oh, cups. For the house. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then the next day it was hair pills. And, uh, I didn't take <laughs> Did them. I got, I got rid of them, dude. What do you mean? I couldn't, I couldn't take them. I, I, it just went against everything I stood for. Dude, Silver told me about uh, about yeah, this. Yeah, like, he takes those fucking things. Or he doesn't takes he? them, and I think he puts the fucking uh, 1950s, it's like, you know, like a uh, salon thing where he puts yeah. it over your head and it shoots you the race. He's like, don't take it. The, the results are in. The reviews, everyone's like, w-. and it's like, then why isn't they a massive multi-billion dollar company if it's legitimately yeah. growing hair? What, what, I, I, did also, you ask me if, s- you, if you stop taking them, your hair just falls out. <laughs> all at once like, yeah i was like i did the math the only way i would not i'd either i'd have to not i'd either be depressed and i would stop taking care of them or i would have zero dollars and not be able to afford the re-up so either way yeah. it'd be a terrible oh, right. time it'd be a very bad time to go bald in like one month yeah it doesn't freeze it doesn't like all right wherever you started you'll go back to there and then start it yeah. doesn't like freeze time it's just like oh no it's been going bald just because you have hair, but your clock has been balding. <laughs> yeah. So, like, yeah. yeah. It's like if a vampire stops it. sucking blood. It didn't just, like, then start to age. It happens yes. like that. Yeah, Wait. You, you lose your hair, and, like, I think it undoes all the progress in, like, a few months. <laughs> when I met Metzger, that's all he would talk about. He was like, yeah, I'm really? bald. I'm like, do you take that stuff? Because I was. I was taking whatever. What's not Rogaine? Propecia? Propecia. Wait, yeah. which, one's, which one's the pill? I think Propecia. I don't know. Propecia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. And he was like, no, I stopped, but now it's going really bald. I'm like, why'd you stop? He goes, I don't know. I forgot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, I did, that, that was going to happen. So, I don't know. Depression's a real thing. 
the side effects are crazy. Depression, boner loss. Yeah, boner loss. It was like, well, that's all I need to to see. I'm already fat, dude. Boners are gonna be few and far between. Yeah, there was this chick comic <laughs> you know, at the I store. Hang on to these boners. <laughs> there was a chick comic at the store. We were talking. Me and uh, this guy John Little were talking about uh, the, the whatever the pills, hair pills, and he was like, "Yeah, but it gives you like boner problems." And I was like, "Yeah, but I read that that's like the same as the." Um, test group, whatever they're called, the placebo, it, it results in that about the same percentage. Yeah. Right then we were passing by this female comic and she goes, no, no, I had a boyfriend who took it and he had boner pro- problems. And I was, it was one of my best comebacks. I was like, yeah, but you're like really flat. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Um, yeah. There's all these like studies of these guys who have like major depression and then they stop taking it. They're suing the company, but their depression doesn't go away, but their hair is, so now they're Ugh. depressed and suing and have, and just bald. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's happening, and that's fine. I've been all right. I've I've come to terms with it for a while. And then where's it going? Of, Show me. Pull it back. Just right, right here. Oh yeah. The, oh yeah. yeah. The, oh yeah. 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 It's going. The sides and the back are all right. It's just do a mohawk while you can. No, there's nothing, dude. I've yeah. never been a uh, physical appearance guy. <laughs> so it's tough. It's I can tough, believe that. I can believe late that. In the, late in the game to be like, but not my hair. It just feels weird. Yeah. It's it's like it's the same reason I get annoyed when I see like fat guys in like stylish clothing. Like what are you even? It's over. It's like why don't you fix the body and then <laughs> decorate? Wear jeans it. and a t-shirt, dude. It's, yeah, it's way be better fat. than what you're doing. Yeah, I love committing to it. My I was fat in college. And my sister saw me laying on my side and my stomach was like, <laughs> you were fat? like it molded. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I weighed like two forty. What? Um, yeah, <laughs> I was fucking big, dude. dude. <laughs> yeah. I just let it go. I stopped moving and whatever. Yeah, it rules. Got it's, it is a nice, it's it, 90% of the time, not caring is great. Yeah, it's this. It's a sitting up in bed with your shirt off and looking down. But then after you do that four or five times, you're like, yeah, I know what I'm getting. I'm not surprising myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> and, Except I'll tell you what hurts is hotels. Hotels get me because I don't have like a giant mirror in my bathroom at, in New York. I'll get yeah, out like a full length mirror and they're all, everybody's doing this like no shower curtain thing in every sh- hotel where it's like just a glass, you know the what I mean? glass? Yes. What the so fuck now I'm is just, that? They need Why to wouldn't stop. they just slide it? Fat people need to come together and be like, yo, enough of this. I don't have to There's see myself There's just a fucking shower. giant mirror and no shower curtain. I just see my gross body. <laughs> as you're <laughs> reaching like, down a scrub between as your I'm legs. As I'm hung over after <laughs> bombing it like a funny bone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just love it. It's just like, it's like ew. You're like, yeah, I know, whatever. I don't care. True. True. That is 90% of the time it's like, yeah, whatever. But every once in a while yeah. it's like, while you're getting dressed or something to do something, you're like, God damn it, dude. I look like a fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah. It's that anyway. it's small percentage of time. Uh, Ted Alexandra used to have this bit that when he was doing like relationship shit, when he was like, I don't have a relationship. He had this great letterman said it was all about being single in his 40s and how yeah. he escaped. And um, he goes, uh, don't your friends, when you know, they'll tell you like, aren't you lonely? He goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a. There's this moment sometimes right before you go to sleep, like right before you fall asleep and you realize there's no one in bed next to you. And and it's just like for those five minutes, you're filled with like this, this like almost like a bottomless pit of loneliness. And it's really profound. And he goes, the other 23 hours and 55 minutes of the day, though, are fucking <laughs> great. <laughs> yeah. 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 I don't like um, I don't like uh, sleeping with someone. Not a fan. How do you do it? How do you deal with it? Yeah, tell they they well, I you I would never like tell someone to leave. Yeah. Or, but yeah, just you got to hold in farts for a whole night for somebody Disaster. you don't even know. It's like ugh. Yeah. Yeah, just holding in farts, dude. Not dude, for my me. first my first night with my girl, I moved in with her and I was just like, you know, you're sleeping, so you just forget. I I was used <laughs> to being alone and I woke up in a new place and I was just like ripped it like a yeah. long one <laughs> and then she was like Ew. i'm like who's it oh fuck yeah it's tough yeah you got on the my uh this is always a funny i mean it's gross because it's my sister but one of the she married him so she's not a whore uh this guy he my brother-in-law is egyptian he's from egypt and like oh, the, cool. one of the first times they slept together he started talking in his sleep so he was just like screaming in arabic 
Really? Yeah. He, I mean, he, he had so many dreams. He's like, lock my whole life. <laughs> just fucking going off. She's yeah. like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm making deals. I was just <laughs> yeah. trying to bargain at the shook. <laughs> yeah, that That's hilarious. Um, yeah. I, I don't, this guy, but Nick Yusuf told me the best way to kick a girl out is before you even bring her in. Be like, by the way, I got morning radio tomorrow. And like, mm. forget the fact that tomorrow's Saturday. They don't know. Just be like, so I can't hang out that late. So you've already got the excuse or like, That's Hey, I got nice. a really early flight. I got a man, not to, not to sound too misogynistic here, but what a nice feeling when they get out of bed and start getting dressed. And and you, go, and oh, you, are yeah. you leaving? Yeah. You're like, no, you don't have, but you're like, I can't protest too leave. much. It's like, I'm please just fucking sure. leave, dude. Please leave. I want to watch fucking TV so bad. Please leave. Yeah. Oh my God. It's the best <laughs> feeling when they leave. It's, and they're just like, yeah. They just start just putting those laid. jeans back on. Yeah. Take oh. out the pizza from the fucking yesterday. <laughs> start eating it. Yeah. Fart. <laughs> God, it feels good. God, what yeah. a better feeling. It's, sometimes it just happens like, as soon as you're like, Ugh, and you're like, oh, and, pull out, and they're just like, see, I'm like, wait, wait, wait. Wait five minutes. <laughs> Don't make yeah, me feel yeah, like you're yeah, using yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait until I kind of want you to go and then well, be yeah. like. I've never, I've never gotten the feeling of I'm being used. No. It's always like, even if she got out and left right away, I'd be like, that was just because she had a negative time. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm worried about that. Dude, I loved, when I moved to New York, I found a lot of chicks who were just like, see, I got work. See ya. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. not trying to be an actress. That makes sense. So I'm trying to become CEO of my fucking company. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I loved it. I'm like, damn, you guys are business oriented. Business sluts. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I get it. <laughs> I, I got two hours on Thursday. You in or out? Yes. How have you done in New York? Sex? Yeah. Uh, I can tell you what, getting canceled helps. People, yeah. People are like, holy shit, this guy's in the news. Oh, yeah, no one cares. Right. No one cares. If you're, dude, I guarantee George Zimmerman got a ton of pussy. Must have. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's amazing the, when people like reach out, yeah. like, oh, can you not? I'm like, no, you'd be surprised. Yeah, Better it's than crazy. Ever. <laughs> yeah, everything's good. Yeah. Yeah, just in the news. That was surprising to me. Yeah, that was surprising. For sure. Because it's like, or maybe they thought like you were in the right. Yeah, but you gotta watch out for those ones. (laughs) If they seek you out and they're like, hell yeah, brother. It's like, all right, man. (laughs) Uh, But yeah, well, New York, New York's, yeah, it's perfect. Because if, if, especially once you get past at clubs, you're just doing stand up every single night. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah, that helps. The best is the the late spots or the last spot of the night. And then it's just like people like leave in a group and it's a, Tuesday and every night's a yeah. party night in New York and, and, and some girls are like, what are you doing? Like, I don't want to go to a bar. Yeah, like, sure. drink a little, yeah. And then all the, you get to see all the sexual predators come out. You get to see Joe DeRosa. Where are you going? <laughs> <laughs> I noticed there's an odd number. <laughs> Can we make it even? <laughs> like, Jesus, I hope dude. he doesn't get accused of anything and they use that clip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I I've seen that a couple I... times lately. <laughs> They bring out the old clips of like, this didn't age well. You're like, oh man, they spoke on yeah. every subject. You're going to find them on something. <laughs> I mean, if I ever get accused of fucking a dog, there'd be so many times oh, where I'll be, be like, 12 videos joking of you about like- it. <laughs> yeah, licking my dog's mouth and they're like, see? <laughs> yeah, there was a guy, uh, I think Joe Buddens. I want to make sure I got this right. You know, I know that name. I know the name. He's a podcaster now, I think. Or no, he's like a rap. Uh, he was a rapper. Okay. He sang uh, Pump It Up. Pump, pump, pump it up. Da, na, 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 I na, na. That. Yeah, it was a hit. Sing but it. I think on a podcast, he kind of admitted to like, if his dog was horny, he would jerk it off. Okay. And then he was like, he was like, what? You guys don't do that? Like, because he, <laughs> he wasn't trying to be funny. He was like, genuinely uh, just like, it, you know, surprised. sometimes. Yeah, it just made me. It's pretty funny. <laughs> he yeah. like genuinely was like, yeah, I'll jerk a dog off. And everybody was like, Yo, that's fucking sauce, son. <laughs> like, 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 He's like, no, I don't podcast. enjoy it. I'm just helping him. And you're like, borderline. Yeah. Real borderline. Have you have you uh, come clean about your location right now? I won't say it. I don't think no. I remember it. I, uh-huh. I won't say it. 
That's all right. <laughs> Thanks. I don't I remember it, it, honestly. That's good. It's the best sharing secrets with friends when they like, don't care about you. Because then they'll <laughs> just like, it's in the vault. Like, literally, you'd have to hypnotize me to get it out. I don't remember. Yeah. Well, I think last time we hung out, we got a little rowdy. We what drank what a was little. it? Uh, last Legion of Skanks. Really, I think it was like the night before you left. Oh, uh, yeah. Or the week of, anyway. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. For sure. Yeah. Oh, that was fun. It was fun. I remember yeah, got now. some pizza after. Yeah. It was a fun night. Oh, yeah. Over at Joe's. Damn, that was fun. <laughs> I just yeah. remember the other day when, when uh, where it's just a fucking st- stupid trial. And then it's like, hey, remember when we dosed Jay? You're like, yeah, that was fucking <laughs> shit. <laughs> it was just like, oh, we're not going to feel shame for this, you guys. Know, it was kept, fucking great. Every once in a while, like, every once in a while, like right after, I did have moments of like, damn, does Jay, as soon as Jay didn't hate me, I was like, all right, I can go back to admitting that this was amazing. It was funny. It was funny it was, from the start. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was always I'm funny. I'm like, I can get tricked into feeling bad about things. The, uh, yeah, but that everyone one, can. But that you, one that's not your out. natural reaction. You're like, oh, you guys, you're now making me feel bad. Oh, yeah. you know? Yeah, it's like you look around like, eh. oh, no, terrible. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. Except you. You were the only one that was like, no, that was funny what we did. I was like, it right. was funny. It was fucking it was. hilarious. I know it no was. No harm, no foul. I, what happened? Oh, he was up late? What, what, what's the issue? Allegedly. I, yeah, that's right. <laughs> he yeah. probably slept like a baby, dude. <laughs> probably did. <laughs> I just, I, I think we've talked about it before, but I remember, because I've never done acid. That was the first night I had any that was of the first it. Night. Really? Yeah, I drank like, I drank more of it than him. But you did, but he got the slip of paper. Though. He did get the, he, he got a lot of it. Yeah. <laughs> he got a good amount, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Texting you. I, I called you and I was like, cause somebody was talking to me outside the stand and went like that, like their hand moved. And I was like, Oh shit. I forgot we did that. And I was like, Holy fuck. We're high. So I, I called you and I was like, dude, are we high? And you're like, no, we're fine. And then, like a minute later, you texted me. You're like, "Oh yeah, we're high." Because like, oh, it did. Yeah, you were yeah, just like, you were, two, "You were five minutes ahead of me." Yeah, and I was like, yeah, "No, I don't like, think it's gonna." You're like, no, we're fine. Don't worry. And then I got a text a minute later. Like, yes, we are high, actually. Because <laughs> <laughs> afterwards, it's like, ah, I may as well take it too. It's a fucking warm New York night. Yeah, that was with a fun nothing night. Nothing going on in the whole world. So like, yeah, we sat, whole- we went out to the bar, and then we went back to. I think I, w- I went to a bar, and then I came back to the stand. We hung out downstairs. downstairs. It was fucking great. Norman? It was, f- it was great. Oh, yeah. No, was, yeah. Norman was there. And we're like, where's Jay? He should be here. Yeah, he's like, where oh, is he's Jay? fuming back at his own apartment while he's his girlfriend a fucking... Grump? <laughs> like, on acid. <laughs> you should be wandering. You should find a fucking golf course to pass out on. You definitely shouldn't be grumpy. <laughs> but I do understand the argument of not being ready for it. <laughs> yeah, and with yeah, a girlfriend. Yeah. And with a girlfriend. That's also a factor. Ah. Uh, I, well, how is that a factor? That. I don't want you know, If you tell me to be correct, I'll me. give it to you. If she's like making you feel shitty, okay, but not like I've let I mean. her down. Now oh, all of a sudden you've yeah. got an angry girlfriend. It's the last thing you want. That's the same shit with Bert. I bet he went in there like, oh yeah, I gotta tell you what Ari did. And she's like, what? And he's like, I know, You're right? right? Yes, yes, <laughs> abs- absolutely. You are correct about this anger. Oh man. <laughs> that a fun night. Yeah, that was a fucking great... Uh, yeah, just being downstairs, like, whoa. Yeah. It wasn't even that big, but it's fun. I like acid. It was nice. I don't know. I miss, it's funny, like, even that was closed in New York, and I miss it. <sighs> Dude, I think this was the best summer of New York, maybe my my whole time there. Really? I, everyone I was left. home. I wasn't really there that much. Why, you went back to Philly? Or wherever? Yeah, and also, I just did the road the whole, <laughs> the whole <I> COVID. <laughs> That's stupid. <laughs> I, well, I mean, not really, stupid, but I've been waiting for it, and I yeah. And again, every once in a while, I feel bad. Like I'll, I'll listen to something where people are like, "It's really fucked up." People are doing that, and then I'll watch like protests or celebrations or so. Yeah, Biden like, celebration. Like, right. doesn't care. if you're on the left, yeah. the, these don't. Black Lives Matter doesn't spread. It's like the 20 people <laughs> I'm selling tickets to in Kansas are going to be fine. Um. But yeah, it does. It is. It does. Sometimes I feel bad. And then sometimes like and then after the shows, like a few days after the shows, if I have zero symptoms, I'm like. I'm good. I I got mad at people for like a little bit, especially while I was living with my parents. And then at some point, like some of my friends were going out and like party with like randoms and like and then at some point I'm like, do what you want. I'm going to try to space out. But like everybody do what the fuck you want. I don't know. Doing shows has been fun. 
Has it? Yeah. I mean, I, I don't fuck around. Like, early I was fucking around. Like, early I was still doing, like, let's take pictures. Oh, yeah. Jay said he did that the first I, time. And yeah. he was like, "What?" I, as he's doing it, he goes, what am I doing? I told myself yeah, I wasn't going to do this. You can't stop. Like, you feel bad not doing it. Now I don't even, now I just, I don't even go out at all. Dude, I, I had a show March 12th, I think. March yeah, 11th about or 12th. When it stopped, yeah. Oh, no. It was in Salt Lake City. And it was, it was, have you been to that club, Wise Guys? Yeah, Wise Guys. Yeah, I've done so that. I did that, that in like, uh, like September. <laughs> oh, really? I yeah, love that I guy, Keith. I did it like during, yeah. But, um, down the street, like literally like a five minute walk is with the jazz play. And they're yeah. on before our show starts, the jazz game is playing. And then what's his name? Gobert. Was yeah, that who yeah, it was? Yeah. 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 He was yeah. like, Oh, Gobert got the virus. And he was like, Oh, what? And then they're like, Hey, game's canceled. And it was on the screen from two blocks away. And then they go, Hey, the whole NBA's canceled. And it was happening right before my show. Yeah. From right there. And it was like, wait, and that made it real. Like, wait, the NBA, that's money. Yeah. And then it was like I remember going like, hey guys, after the show, like, we can't, we can't do the pictures because yeah. like, you know, you've heard what's happening and you could hear people go like, oh, <laughs> yeah. like, oh really? Okay. Well, that's what, it, I mean, half of them, not half, but a lot of them just like you on like a podcast or something. They're just like, I kind of came here to get a fucking picture, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know, but uh, yeah, it is. I still, they still do that. Like I, every, at the end of every show, I'm like, hey, sorry, normally I'd fucking hang out. Get some you drinks. understand we can't I, right? yeah and then people are still like pussy like of course <laughs> and you're like of course all my fans are like fuck I'm like alright dude <laughs> <laughs> and you're like Dash, I, you got me on that one. Oh, I can get tricked into that too people are like what are you gay I'm like no let's go do shots <laughs> no let's do it let's mouth let's hang fucking out fucking masks off let's burn our masks and I'll show you <laughs> but yeah dude the I came up with a list of shit to shit on oh yeah 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 I, this is the only one I've ever done like this where I came up with a title and then I was like, let's, instead of a topic, <laughs> let's just do a title. Yeah. And it was, I just like the Shane and Shafir shit on shit. Yeah, I'm down with that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like there's no like must or anything. I'm just like, I don't know. Let's have some fun. By the way, Shane has a great podcast called Matt and Shane's Secret Podcast. Everyone fucking check it out. It. Yeah. And, and Patreon. Yeah, please. Um, political people done with them dude it's just like i didn't want to go like people on the left or the right i just mean like people who are just like here's my well, opinion it's funny I, I literally i just did an episode of our podcast and my friend billy uh he has a podcast war mode dude it's crazy it's very funny war mode's a very funny podcast check it out if if you're into like uh it's just funny if you like alex jones you'll like war mode but okay uh I was just, because he's he's my friend's younger brother. He's Matt's younger brother. But he's, like, the youngest of all the brothers, so he's, like, jacked and, like, got bullied the most, and now he's, like, a super bully. Like, he's oh. just, he dominates. Yeah, nice. And so, like, every once <laughs> yeah, in a while, nice. you try to, get him, try to get him fired up. And I was just hitting him with that today. I was like, no, it's cool that, like, uh, what I try <laughs> to do is, like, not get affected so that politics these days doesn't affect my actual life and who I am. Cause he's gone like full on. He's gone. Full, he's gone full like Alex Jones. But I like those guys better. I'll say that. Which guys? I if somebody is the, going full political, yeah. Give me the Alex Jones guy the versus conspiracies. yeah Tripoli's yes. like that. Yes. Give me those guys every time. Yeah. I actually like, enjoy being around those guys. They're yeah, because they're not like. Trump's the best. Trump's the worst. They're like, they're trying to take our guns. So they faked a yes. uh, school shooting. You can see how this, and you're like, okay, <laughs> yeah, this is yeah. fun. It is uh, fun. Yeah. All the QAnon stuff and all the, like, the, the pizza gate. You're like, this is all puzzles. This is interesting. Yeah. You guys like puzzles. <laughs> Dude, I was with Alex Jones back when he was not right wing, but they didn't call him that. They just called him a conspiracy theorist where yeah. he, they didn't have right wing, left wing. I mean, they did, but like, he was just like, you know, he just made up stuff. When I was introduced to him, it was like with from Rogan, and he was just like, "Hey, ninety eight percent of what that guy says is ridiculous, but two percent, he fucking nails it." And I don't yeah. know how he knows. Yeah, but um, there was a shooting at Fort Hood or one of those. Yeah, I remember uh, some that. Arab ish, whatever you know what I mean, Middle Eastern <laughs> um, 
uh, they're like, I'm Iranian. I'm like, yeah, that's what I said. They're like, that's not yeah. Arab. I'm like, eh, maybe check yourself. I think yeah. you are. Um, You're what we a, say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're whatever we say you are country that place. doesn't fucking matter <laughs> yeah you're a country with a ch in it shut up yeah um but he was like uh he goes he was at the bar at cap city with me as he was like being breaking and um i'm drinking shiners and and rogan was on stage and and he goes yep i guarantee you uh they're not gonna take that guy alive like it's a setup the whole thing's a setup and they'll like kill him so they won't whatever three minutes later they're like He's been shot in the leg. He's in custody. He's in stable condition at what Walter Reed Medical Center. And sure. he goes, yeah, of course they're going to keep him alive because <laughs> <So> like, <laughs> like, what? like no matter what happens, he's like, yeah. I, I got an answer for it. He, that guy fucking rules though. Man, I like that guy. I'm a fan. I, I used to love him. I hated how he got lumped in with this thing when I'm like, he's just a conspiracy. Well, that's theorist. right. That's it. That is important to differentiate the right wing and conspiracy. Cause like, my friend, I hate to use him as an example, but the guys that do war mode, yeah, they'll say shit that I'm like, you know, that's almost socialist what you're saying, right? Like, they'll be like, Bezos controls everything. It's bad. And it's like, oh, you guys don't like monopolies? Like, you want, and it, like, stuff like that. But they're all for it. Like, they're not politically really aligned. Oh, they're if just that makes sense. Like, mm -hmm. like, it's it's almost its own lane of like. Yeah, it's separate. Yeah, I don't. I don't even know how to well, really. The, the war thing is like that pro-war, anti-war, where yeah. it's like and they're, they're all anti-right. They just like pro-war, or they can't be anti-war. Is a lot and of people. Like the New guys, York Times. the guys that are like you know the Epstein guys, all that. They're all anti-war. They really are, which is pretty good. What Epstein, the well, the guys that are into Epstein? conspiracy stuff. The guys that yeah. are into conspiracy. That's what I mean. They're anti-war. Yeah, they are anti-war. Yeah, because they're always like, there's a conspiracy to get us into Yemen or yes. to get us into this. Or and like, they, they lied about Bay of Pigs to get whatever, I don't know, whatever that story is. For sure. Yeah, they, and they're recording? right about that. You recording on a mic? Oh, sorry. Uh, no, I'm recording on a thing. Separately? What are you recording on? This thing? Oh, it's doing the ambient. Okay, that's fine. And then this thing is what I'm talking to you on. Oh, okay, that's fine. I didn't see I it. I have no idea what's going Somebody else set this up. No, you're great. Right. Yeah, you're great. But no, you're they great. are. They're all these like conspiracy theorists, but they have no political alignment. They're just like, yeah. whatever. Hillary Clinton's part lizard. And fucking, <laughs> you know, the other side guy is, I don't know, he's like part is met safe sent from wherever. Yeah. I do. They are right about the anti-war stuff. That's good. For the most They'll part, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. I love picking at people too. My mom, I mean, she's so liberal and then, um, and, uh, she hates Trump and it's now it's like, so you can stop talking about him now. Right. You, you yeah. did it. And she's like, wow. I'm like, no, no, just, you said you don't want to like, he's yeah. going, let him go away. But they, that's how they made their lives. But anyway, she said today, she goes, did you hear about the vaccine? They, they might be starting up in like middle of December. And I'm like, yeah, I saw Pence announced that. And she goes, yeah. mm. <laughs> it's yeah, so yeah, easy yeah, to get yeah, those yeah, people. Yeah. yeah, it's like it's really impressive that the Trump administration got that vaccine out so quick. <laughs> I love doing <laughs> it. <laughs> and people are like, you right wing? I'm like, no, I'm just anti you. Yeah, that's really it. Yeah. That's really it. Although, I have admitted this before. It does, I don't know, I like, I like the, maybe because just where I'm from, but I like the right wing people more as people. In, in, our, in our career, yeah. you and I, who genuinely has fucked with my life personally the most has been the left. So I've seen it shift and it shifted from it's not political. It shifted from um, dirty was the problem. Mm. Oh, you, ha you have to rely on sex jokes. And you're like, no, that's that was three jokes in an hour. But they always say that. And now it's like, oh, yeah. you have to rely on racism. And you're like, no. So the sex jokes things were more like the Christians and they were a little more right wing, but it wasn't like we need to get rid of you. They were just like, yeah, that's yeah, all, yeah. that's all new. Yeah. So personally, I've, that's the, anyway, I don't want to get I too hate serious. Them. I fucking hate them. And I think a lot of them, <laughs> if like, if they just ended like political strife, like if, if like, um, well, let's just say the left people, if, if the Republican party just ended and everyone's like, because no one went anymore. They're like, hey, we're all out. We're all going Democrat. Sure. A lot of Democrats would just kill themselves because they have nothing to live for. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people we know, if racism is gone, they'd be like, oh, I can't hate anyone. <laughs> I, mean, yeah, I would I, be pretty bummed if racism was gone. 
You ever see? <laughs> you ever see? Like, man, what the about. fuck? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, uh, I. Uh, wait, what was I gonna say? Do you ever see the comics who like get super serial on, uh, on, on like Instagram or or Twitter or something? Yeah, and we've talked like, to it. Oh, did you hold on? Did you have you been on Instagram since you've been out there? A I posted, little bit, but not I much. posted one of these, dude. I posted a fucking. Yo, what up? No, but no fuck like one you. of those. Yeah, but I did it because I sold like twelve tickets. Oh. Okay, that's so it's funny. <laughs> that's fair. It was a yeah. totally empty to- room, and I was like, "Yo, we did it, Kansas City." And it was just <laughs> yeah, like yeah, all empty like- tables. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's great. That's great. Yeah. yeah. I told that's, him. I, yeah. Some, somebody was like, some chick, some hot chick was always showing her body. Uh, you know, and it's like, uh, I think I mentioned on a podcast once, I'm like, it's, where's your comedy there? It's fucking dumb. Um, and then she, like, way later, like a year later, is like, oh, but it already shows his balls. I'm like, I'm mocking myself. <laughs> I'm gross. Yeah. If you balls get fat, lady, show your body funny. all you want. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, Not when you're, hot chicks aren't fun. Balls, funny. Yeah. You're not Burke like showing your balls shirt off. to be like. Rogan cannot take his shirt off. Yeah. It's not funny if you're in <laughs> yeah. shape. Yeah. Balls are disgusting. <laughs> they're they're yeah. horrifying. But uh, the show the crowd selfie. And it was like, we all saw like a couple comics do it. And you're like, lame. And then a few. <laughs> so like when I, when I was in high school, all my friends were like, we're not joining a frat, right? What a ridiculous thing to pay for friends. And then every one of my friends, except one, joined a frat. And we're like, what the fuck are you doing? Don't it was do the it. same shit with that selfie. We were yeah. all like, oh, it's so ridiculous and self-serving. And then they all started doing it. Yeah. Well, that's what it takes. It just takes a couple to do it that you respect. And you're like, all right, well, this feels good. If I do it, I like to feel good. I'll do it. But it was nice. It was nice. I need you. And we, we this is a good yeah. thing for us to both Call agree. each other. Yeah. Definitely. Text me if I do something that fucking corny, please. You're like, we talked about this. What the fuck yes. is wrong with you? You can ignore me if you want, but you will remember this guy. And you'll be like, no, it's different, dude, because there's massive yeah. regard. I'm like, fuck you. It's not different. It's exactly the same. Or people go, it's different. This is massive regard. That was the staple center. And you're like, no, no, no. That's very similar. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's well, not, if you sold out the garden, different. if you sold out like the garden or an arena, how much more of a fucking ego boost do you need? You yeah. animal. Where well, you got to push it. That's why I love when celebrities take pictures of other celebrities. Like here, I here with like fucking whoever. And you're like, are you still climbing? <laughs> I can't wait to, for somebody to put this clip next to when I do this. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm love those like back to back. <laughs> you said this. Now here's this. You're like, fuck. With a full head of hair. <laughs> <laughs> Just <the> hair. <laughs> I don't mind it as much if they hire a photographer who gets the shot behind sure. them. But like you're interrupting the show, so you can be like, "Hey, everybody, go crazy for a second. It's like blah. I didn't think I didn't think crowds would know. Like in Kansas City, I was like, "I'm sorry, the only thing I'm thinking about because there was no one there. Like yeah. it was enough. Oh really? This, Sunday, Sunday, seven p.m. Middle Sunday's of the, the Chiefs. Work, work on work on new jokes show. Chiefs game. I mean, I, it mm. was COVID Chiefs weekend of Thanksgiving. You. Me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, don't worry, I'm on it. <laughs> Dance around it. I'm okay, not, yeah. I'm, not <laughs> I'm aware. You don't think I'm aware? You know, when I started uh, headlining, it was always like, no, there's a state fair like 100 miles yeah, away. And that's, fair, you know, yeah. that's that's only one month long every year. <laughs> I'm like, what? Yeah, um, yeah they okay. tried the Chiefs game. They're like, Chiefs games tonight. I was like, if you're a fan of mine, you're not going to let a Chiefs game hold you back. You I think it's probably it. COVID, but... Uh, COVID it w- will, I'm sure, affect it. Yeah, it, it has. But as soon as I, I mentioned it on stage, I was just fucking talking on stage, and I was like, all I'm thinking about is filming myself in front of this crowd. And everybody in the crowd started laughing. It was like, do it. That's very funny. They, which, they got it? Which I was surprised that they got it. That's what I mean. Like, I, I, I didn't think regular people were picking up on I, I wonder that. how sometimes I'll, I'll see, like, a fan, like, get something like understand it and comment mm-hmm. on it. I'm like, man, that's real observant. Like they they must see it sometimes. Oh, when we were at uh when we did uh what's your fucking deal? When I was joking about slapping the mic against my thigh. Yeah. They got it. And I was like, oh shit, you guys pick up on that. All right. Yeah, anyway. they must have seen it. I just got that. I gotta fucking edit it. I'm like, I hate editing. <laughs> <laughs> 
yeah, yeah. I was like, Chris, where is the footage? And he's like, here, I sent it to you before. Oh, different email address. Well, here it is. I'm like, God, I've been waiting for a month. And now it's been like two weeks and I haven't even opened it. Yeah, that was, that was fun. Work. It was, that fun. was fun. It was good. It was fun. It was good to try to sell that to a network and then put you and me. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, no, I'll, still no. Yeah. yeah. Hey, who did you put out this? <laughs> Why? Yeah. Um, have you ever seen a, a comic or a friend of yours be non-political and then shift into the political? Yeah. That's like all, uh, literally all of our friends in 2016. Yeah. yeah. Every single person I know. I know a chick who didn't even <laughs> vote and then was like, this is ridiculous what you guys did. And like, you weren't even I- into any of this. Yeah. You're just into like it's, talking about Lady Gaga. And now suddenly you're mad. It's a bunch of people that like eight years ago were like saying the N word and are now like telling you to vote. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> I love talking to people I don't vote and they're like what yeah and I'm like well what do you want me to vote for the other side and they're like no exactly vote, vote for this side I'm like but I don't I don't think any sides I think yeah we need another way to get around it that was that was everybody because especially because I live in Pennsylvania well I would have voted I think in Pennsylvania yeah uh, everybody was like not voting is like voting for him and I was like well if I vote if I have it's, to vote, that I'm voting he for might be getting a vote, dude. <laughs> so take it easy. Yeah, anytime they said that about Black Lives Matter, too, like your silence means you support the other side. And I'm like, you know the white power people are saying the same thing. <laughs> if you're silent about black yeah, people you know sucking, I'm then a, like a bunch of texts from my hometown right now. <laughs> yeah. it's, I, I never, not voting is voting for the other side. I'm like, that's so fucking pompous. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's been, but you know, I'm again, I'm very easily, I can get propagandized pretty easy, so I can get tricked into like, it was it was tough, you know, I didn't put up a black square. Yeah, that's what I was about to ask you. What was the the pressure to put up a black square? But there was pressure, and there was like genuine like, and then like I was just at my parents' house. I wasn't doing anything. I was just me too. I was like, dude, am I? Should I sit? And then I was like, you know, you have like a moment of clarity. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, what are don't you talking do anything, about? It's, you it's weirdo. It's obvious dumb shit. And I'm like, yeah. how about I just, help, I just hire another black person instead of fucking <laughs> yeah. make signifying that I'm okay. And I love all the actors who posted that. And then people go, hey, uh, that reminds me. Let me look into your past real quick. Yeah, <laughs> and it's like, oh, you got a bunch of questionable shit. You're like, uh, that was one. I was like, nah, you're not going to, I'm not yeah. going to be in the game i'm gonna be out of it and it's such a lame obvious way to show that you don't hate black people i'm like i i I don't know ask an old opener or something yeah that was just that was total social pressure that almost everybody we know caved to in some way or another and then it's like and i get it i'm not criticizing really because it it could happen i'm susceptible to being a pussy at any moment yeah but you you should be uh, open to criticism when it does happen. <laughs> yeah, like, like me right? buying hair, me buying hair pills, pussy. I admit yeah. it. <laughs> I try to pretend I was blacked out. I would out. love to see I you wasn't. with a bucket. I wasn't. <laughs> You're like I had one truly. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I was close. I remember that. And then you know what? You know what really f- fucked me up on that was like three weeks after all that. I you know I hate to say like George Floyd, but it was like three or four weeks. It was like a month after George Floyd. And there was an NBA commercial where it was like LeBron James. It was like for the playoffs. It was like LeBron James was like dunking. It was like all this cool shit. And it was like, we're going to rise up against racism. And I was like, I just remember being like, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Like, I forgot yeah. we were all, I forgot we were rising up against racism. <laughs> like, I was like, and I, it just, it, it was very, you know, it just Dude, was the- funny that like corporations are going to be slightly behind when it comes to the commercials they put out and we're still going to be getting like black lives matter nhl commercials and like in next yeah, they season got mad at the nhl because because nba and baseball took a day off after somebody got killed and the nhl was like yeah we're not gonna take off work They're like how dare you he's like how dare our whole corporation not take off like <laughs> yeah, go yeah. talk to ge they're not taking off why, why? Why? Also, we have like three blacks. Yeah, we have PK <laughs> Subban, and we've been making him talk every day. <laughs> <laughs> it's uncomfortable, dude. They really said like the NBA when they're like, maybe we shouldn't come back because maybe it'll distract from this cause, and it did. 
<laughs> yeah, like, yeah, like yeah, cool. LeBron's <laughs> playing. Fuck all of us. It really did. Oh, of course it did, dude. Remember when dude. podcast LeBron said, hey, the Lakers are walking out. And then everyone was like, uh, good luck with that. We're going to keep playing, Giannis and everything. We're like, yeah, we're going to keep playing. Yeah, He's yeah. like, oh, no, no, we'll keep playing. No, we'll keep playing too. We'll keep yeah, playing. we'll be back. <laughs> fucking pussy. Yeah, the, same fucking- people, the same people that were like, no, China's pretty cool. <laughs> Dude, I read this article on like how we use the word fascism way too much. And uh, they're like, you call Trump a fascist because he has like fascist like ideas. I don't really fully understand it. But then like he hates China and Biden is like, we should do business with China and China is a fascist regime. Yeah, China is a authoritarian <laughs> and, and so you've problem. used this word up so much on a guy who opposes the actual thing you're talking about. Yeah, it's like the uh, it's like the Me Too movement. It's like yeah, I've been raping the whole time. I, I never <laughs> pulled back from that. I did not let that affect me. <laughs> I mean, I'm out of shape, so it's hard to chase them down sometimes. True, but I you am. Can trick them. <laughs> yeah, they've never seen a uh, go move left, take right. <laughs> they might be faster than you, but juking it's not their strength. Oh yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, that posted black. That chick from um, Harry Potter posted a black square, the feminist one. And and she she all her stuff is like has this like um, white like border so she put a white border on it and people are like you did it wrong and they all got uh, super mad at her I'm like she's help she's trying to help you damn I felt bad I think I uh, I don't know say I DM'd a friend and I was like yo I think it's actually like kind of fucking weird to put up that square and they got they were like fuck you I was like ah. Eh. Like, I texted I thought it was a close friend, and I was like, I think this is a weird thing. Like, I wouldn't do that. Like, I think it's a bad look. L- looking, it just, it, it seems. I think just, it was a bad look within, like, four hours. I think black people were like, what the fuck are you guys doing? Also, everybody <laughs> did it. Uh, Tim Tim was, uh, he, he signed with the manager. He's dropped her already, but uh, she was trying to get him to drop his agent. Tim? Um, Dylan? Yeah. And, yeah, and go with another agent that she's I thought in you were going to say Tim put up a black square. Oh no! Yeah, and so she, I was she like, put, "What?" Yeah, she sent him a thing of of uh, of like, "Look, this agency I want you to go with. They just released a statement how they stand for black, you know, causes and everything like that." And she goes, "That's why I'd love you to go with them. I, they believe in the things I believe in." And then my agent, who was had Tim, he goes, "Yeah, w- we also put up that dumb thing." Every agency put up the same dumb statement. Wait, they, <laughs> like, the person wanted Tim Dillon to sign with an agent because they support Black Lives Matter? No, she wanted her to sign with an agent that, because, I'm sorry. because she was in bed with this guy and they always protected each other. Like, don't, I'll tell my clients not to leave you. You tell my, your clients not to mm. leave me. So she wanted him over there and she's just using anything she could to like get him over there. But it's the fakest thing. It's like every corporation, every business was like, we stand yeah. for black causes. It was just like. If you don't do it, you're, it's just like, get back to work. Shut the yeah. fuck. It's also, it makes you not do anything to correct your behavior. If you have of been course. like, I could change this or that. You post a black square, you feel like you did it. You vote for a system that's broken and you're like, I did something. You're like, you did nothing. You said yes to the system. Yeah. It's like, uh, it's like when you run from like a bear, whoever's the slowest. So like, it's kind of the same thing. It's like, well, I at least posted a fucking square. I'm not as bad as the guys who didn't. So I'm done. I'm done. It's yeah. like I voted Democrat. At least I didn't vote Republican. I'm not racist. The, I can get the whip back out because <laughs> I'm not as bad I, as the other racist. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, I hate it. I hate it so much. And Dave Smith pointed this out a long time ago. He goes, "You've never even read anything about the other side. You don't know the other side. You don't know what they even think." But you're like, "They suck." Fox News is awful. I'm like, "Have you seen Fox News?" Like, no, but. It's awful. Fox News is <laughs> like, pretty fuck bad. Off. <laughs> Dude, I, I watched. Watch I was at my news. parents, and they watched the liberal, the CNN all day, and I finally watched Fox News, and I'm like, it's exactly the same. Oh, it's no different, dude. I didn't know they were the exact same because I've I grew up I grew up in a Fox house. I don't know if you can tell by looking at me, but full <laughs> Fox. You, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, and then I, I, during during all of this during COVID, when yeah. I was home. I would watch CNN at night sometimes, and it would be yeah, fucking, listen. dude, Don Lemon. Don Lemon is such a fucking cuck. Bro. God, I guarantee you that guy gets DP'd. I, I, like, it got to the point where I was, like, hate watching Don Lemon a little too often. It was enough that I, like, dug into his past a little. He's got a little sexual assault case brewing. Does he really? Yeah, he does. All so those I'm guys, pretty happy about that. Better, holier than thou, it's just like... <laughs> 
it's, I, think I, it's, I think it's everybody has a little something so then it's like quit talking about how awesome you are because I guarantee you punched a chick in college <laughs> or something you know well, I think his, his was pretty funny I think he like uh, came up to a guy at a bar in the Hamptons and was yeah. like are you trying to fuck me he like said it to the guy he was like do you want to fuck me and the guy was like what and then Don Lemon rubbed <laughs> rubbed his hand on his balls and put it in the guy's face <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's very funny. Wow. <laughs> Don Lemon approached the dude and was like, are you trying to fuck me, you gay bitch? And the guy was like, uh, what? What are you talking no. about? And then he rubbed his own dick and put it in the guy's face. <laughs> That's like shit like, that if you like damn. saw that happen from a straight guy to a woman, you'd be like, oh, you're gone, dude. Yeah, that, I gotta beat the no... shit out of this guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And he's like... <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's Dude. what happened. The guy who filed the case was like, everybody at the bar that I worked at, he worked there at the bar. And he was like, everybody made fun of me from that day forward because of what Don Lemon did to me. Wow. So because it was a dude, everyone was like, yo, you and Don, are you guys dating now? Like, everyone was like, <laughs> ah, f- why will no one support him? me? <laughs> 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 what a fucking dude we had me and my friend just or me and brian or jesse i don't forget which one of us we were walking through the quad in maryland and we saw some guy like from like 300 yards away it was night we saw some guy like beating up a girl like smacking her and we're like oh sh- no we gotta we, i mean there's two of yeah. us at least uh, alone i probably wouldn't have done anything but i'm like there's two of us and and brian and jesse are both black so i'm like all right we can yeah we can we can we can at least stop this and he and was we went up, what Nothing. Yeah, yeah. And we went up there, and it was two girls from the basketball team. One was like 6'1 and beating on her girlfriend, and we just go like, hello. I don't know know what to do in this situation. Yeah, it's a tough one. (laughs) Yeah, I'm like, what, what, are we going to beat up the chick? I don't don't know what to do. Yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah. How great would it be if Don Lemon really caught a fucking sexual? Oh, it'd be great. If it got going. Yeah, I think they're paying that guy off, the guy at the bar. I think they're giving him some money to hush that to thing going. out. Dude, I saw, I, it's funny, I've, I've been drunk and I've seen some. I believe that. Some guy on girl violence in college. Yeah. Me and my friend were walking over the bar and, and he, we, I just remember watching this boyfriend pushed his girlfriend straight onto the ground. What? And like, me and my friend stopped it. We were like, all right, yo, chill. Yeah, but we were both like laughing, like it was very, it was funny. Anytime I've seen guy on girl violence, I've been like, "Oh shit, dude, what are you doing?" (laughs) Broken it up, but it's always it's always been so shocking that I'm kind of like, "Yo, take it easy." (laughs) Wow, you don't see this every day. Like when when Snooki fifty seven Chevy, that's crazy. Oh yeah, the Snooki one got punched in the face. If I was there and I would have seen that, I'd be like, "Yo." And then, you know, break it up, but like, still whoa, be whoa, like, whoa, 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 what? Oh my God, no, no, stop, 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 stop. Wow. You did it? <laughs> we all wanted to. When I see somebody yelling at a girl at a bar and some like, one of your night, white knight friends like, hey man, and you're like, dude, 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 dude. They didn't just, it didn't come out of the blue. Who knows? She said something. <laughs> yeah. I, I, it's, come on. He's just yelling. You're allowed to yell. It's a verbal conflict. That means they're on equal footing. Don't get involved in this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, oh, all right. Fuck. Next thing. Yeah. Comedy club. Comedy club owners. Without specifics, I didn't even mention anyone specifically on purpose. Um. I will say this. Hold on. Yeah. You good? Oh, thank you. Look at this. Bringing me some booze. Who's that? Don Lemon. I'm good. Thank you. That's Donnie. Oh, nice. Uh. Comedy club owners. I, I think. Part, I yeah. enjoy them. I'm new. I'm new at headlining. So I'm happy to be there type attitude with just about everybody. Every once in a while, they stink, obviously. Okay. I, I was know. actually I picturing New York club owners. Oh, okay. Um, and not road club owners. Road club owners, actually, that's they're a different breed. I kind of like them so far. They're either going to book you or not book you, the road ones. They're like, it's just, and it's just based on generally, like, can you make me money or not? Yeah. Which is like, that's fine. It's a business. Comedy club owners in New York? Yeah. I, I think uh, they have this, they do this thing where they act like they understand comedy completely. And it's like, no, you just open up a business. Um, yeah. You know, and you don't, you, you don't have any better understanding of this than anyone else. You've been in this business for four years or seven years or whatever it is. And God, they act. 
Not all of them. Sure, of but course. Some of them, of course. Are like, I think they enjoy the power or something. Yeah, of course, they love the fucking power because the power they have is immense. I mean, people literally moved their entire lives to live in New York City to follow the dream of getting booked at these clubs. Yeah. So you you have like a thousand people in a city that are like begging, please, please, please. please. So of course that, and then especially because. You know, let's face it. If you're becoming a comedy club owner, you were kind of a loser your whole life. So this is pretty fucking cool. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that Marco guy. <laughs> People like that where I'm like, oh, you don't even ugh, you don't even like the fucking sport. You're just like. Yeah. An owner. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I guess I haven't really had. So my, my New York club experience hasn't been that extensive. Long. Because yeah. I like was relative i was new and then i got canceled and then COVID. so like i really didn't do the clubs that much you know uh, yeah are you in at the cellar yet or no no i was Joke. i was getting close i like i think i was and then COVID. damn it did put a yeah. stop on a lot of shit the, yeah. the laugh factory owner they used to do the open mics and then it was like he would give you advice which sounded like a good idea it's like all right well you've seen a lot of comedy tell, tell me what i should work on but it's like a college professor telling second graders what they need to work on. It's like, no, oh. just, you're not even close. Like, or Dude, somebody's no. like, I, I did my first set. Can you give me tips? And it's like, Gah. I did, I did a club and it's in Jersey. So I go in there, I did a Tuesday and a Wednesday and it was the first time I was featuring there and there's no host. So it's just an opener. And then I, op I opened for one comic. So it's a two person show. And there was like four women in the audience, it was a Tuesday night in a beach town in New Jersey eating pasta. Like they were just sitting there eating pasta and they were like, all right, do 20. And I was like, while I was on stage, I was like, all right, this is new. I, I said, this is new material. The okay. owner pulls me outside after my set and is like, don't ever do new material at my club. This isn't like a workout room. You do your A stuff every time you're here. And that, like he just it was it was the craziest thing I've ever I thought he was coming and taking me outside to be like that was pretty funny he took me outside to be like never work on stuff in my room again and it's like who like, the fuck okay. are you what do you mean you Get don't have a crowd, crowd. <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 it's like this is exactly that's what Jamie said to me once I I showcase and he was like yeah it was just crowd work I was like yeah I was like eight people in the crowd he goes yeah but you can't do that on the Tonight Show and I'm like I'm not showcasing with the Tonight Show I'm why would I do the eight Tonight person Show room <laughs> and I did well like. Yeah, what are you talking about? Why would I ever tonight? do the Tonight Show? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not even a dream of mine. Yeah, remember that, Remember when that was people's dreams? Is that still the Tonight Show? It, I think when that happened, when those when TV started moving away, when Letterman retired, and like, I think a lot of people were like, they built their acts for exactly that, and then because it was like, never, oh, I was fuck. Yeah. I was never that. I was never once like, I can't wait You're for never my get that. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't think I'd get a lot of things. By the You're way, just not right for it. You're also not <laughs> yeah. right for SNL. I, that's another one where I'm like, yeah, you don't do yeah. impressions or characters. So I do I'm some like, good impressions. You let me hear one. Oh, me so sorry. That, that's a problem. Sorry, <laughs> and maybe he's from Asia. <laughs> do a Matt McCusker. <laughs> oh, me so. <laughs> that's, that's my one impression. <laughs> I just apply it to everything. <laughs> uh. Yeah, the, the, the late night thing, it's very funny to even, I remember there was a guy I opened for in Lancaster when I started and he had been on the Tonight Show a bunch. And I remember even then not giving a fuck or being impressed by that. And I was like, that's pretty cool. Like if you go to get a job, like you can put that on your resume. That's a pretty cool. Like I meant like, <laughs> dude, like when he goes and gets a real job, he can be like, I did Letterman. <laughs> like, like, oh, really? Okay. Yeah. All right, well, I'm going to hire you. Go ahead and start stocking. Yeah, I, I wonder who, I don't know. Do people still get fans from Letterman? I don't know. Well, that's what they used to ask when I started. They're like, have you ever been to The Tonight Show? It was still a thing. Like, your parents' friends would be like, that's the credit. And it's like, no, but I also never will. Yeah. And I'm going to sell out, like, lots of places. I, what's yeah. nice What's nice is, for me, knocking out the SNL credit. Because that's the credit that every aunt and uncle hits you well, with. How do you like, say it? I was booked on SNL. Well, they know now. Right. Everybody in my family knows. <laughs> but I'm saying, like, normally people are like, are you going to be on SNL? They're like, oh, you're doing comedy in New York. You're doing SNL? Uh, yeah. Like, yeah, I did it. 
<laughs> didn't go great. <laughs> <laughs> it was an odd. It was an odd run. I didn't. Yeah, they didn't use me much. <laughs> I was underutilized. We had, our, we had artistic differences. <laughs> you think there's any chance you get back on there? Or they ask you? No. It's too, they, all you need is another two people to be like, no, that's we haven't forgotten. That's not. Yeah, all it takes is Twitter. Yeah. I was in a, when I booked This Not Happening, um, If there's when you're doing the booking, there's like seven or eight people in the room. And the easy ones are easy, you know, uh, Rogan wants to do it. Everyone's like, sweet. Hell yes. Great. You know, obviously he, he, he yeah. gives them clout and, and whatever else. Ron White wants to do it. Fucking great. You know, but Maria Bamford, everybody loves her. Fucking great. And then you have the people who like, you know, are good and then yeah. your friends, you want to help them and they're good. So you want to get them in. So you're like, what about this guy? Brett Ernst is a good example. He is yeah. a great, he's a good storyteller, you know, like really he good. Crushes, he is, man. That guy's yeah. so funny. That guy's yeah. so fucking funny. And All you right, get sorry. in a room. It's okay. But he is. And he does yeah. that thing really good. Tells you stories of his Italian fucking childhood. Yes. You know? And it's like, and they're like, if three people are like, oh, I like Brett. And then two other people are like, don't know him one way or the other, but I'm open to it. If one person goes, ah, then everyone else has to fight. And unless you're yeah. willing to fucking, this is my one fight, you go like, well, let's move on to the next one. Yeah. And, and that's how it works. And if one person goes, no, fuck that guy. He's a this. Then you're like, all right. Or we can go to yeah. war for a week. And it's just like, it's just not yeah. worth it for people. Yeah, it's not. They don't. That's you want to talk about a group that really doesn't care. I mean, fuck club owners. Talk about the fucking industry and fucking writers rooms and all that shit of just like resentful motherfuckers that wanted to be writers and wanted to be comics and like ugh. and that are not so they're mad at you they have kind of come up with a reason why why they're not and you are i i think that was because i i just this is all new like literally this is year two of all this for me so the first year was really cool i got like jfl up next with comedy central snl that was cool as fuck at first for like a month and then damn that's quick it was all this year. It was right when Just I moved to laughs, New York. And then immediately like SNL is like, I'm yes. mad. that's like, that should have been four years later. Yeah. That was right away. They, they wow. saw me. At J they were like, this guy is good. And then, but everybody was, then I started to realize everybody, like all the agents, all the writers, all the producers on shows and shit. I became friends with them on Instagram. So we we're all on Instagram and I realized they wanted to be cool. Like they were all like, Try, I don't know. It's a weird thing. If you're if you're working in the entertainment industry, you like want to be a cool person. Uh huh. I don't know. It was no, weird to see. It, it was that, like they just want to hang agent? out with you and be yeah. invited. There's a, there's this one agent that hangs out at the comedy store, and it's just like he dresses like an agent, trying to not dress like an agent. Yeah. You know, like yeah. my agent at least tries to dress like he came to uh, Bonnaroo once, and I was like Justin. <laughs> Take off your slacks and button down. Can, oh, and I had like sure. shirts I was selling. I'm like, take a t-shirt of mine. But then he had like slacks and a t-shirt. I'm like, fuck. But at least he wasn't trying to be cool. Yeah. And yeah these yeah. guys like try to dress like Crystalia, and it's like, get out of here, agent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All the comics are talking. You're not invited. Yeah. The gate. And they want to be invited. The people that are like the actual gatekeepers in this industry fucking stink, dude. As as corny as comedians are, as people. Mm -hmm. Almost, uh, not all of them, obviously. I like comedians, for the most part. Nah, They're great. I'm, I'm lying. They're I, I, like, I like about 10%. <laughs> I hate these They've motherfuckers. They've gotten so lame. I hate it's, these it's... fucking people. <laughs> they really are fucking punks. Man. They really, I don't know what happened to my industry. My colleagues used to be so cool. We used to be outsiders. And, fucking, and then they got popular, and, and they started trying to hold on to it. I've had people sell me out and their first thing was like, he might, he could lose sponsors for this. And I'm like, that's what you're thinking about? You fucking <laughs> you sell like you out. Sponsors? <laughs> oh my God. What happened to comics? What the fuck happened to comics? I mean, I was never, that. that's the thing. You and I have had this conversation before because I started like late enough that like when 2016 happened. So when Trump got elected, that's when shit really turned for me. I started probably in like 2010. I'm probably okay. in year 10 of me doing an open mic for the first time. Okay. And you're ahead of schedule. I am. Yeah. I mean, I got yeah. SNL. I'm literally ahead of every single schedule. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and it, obviously it backfired quite a bit, but I'm saying statistically I'm doing all right. Mm -hmm. Not now. 
We've had lighting road rooms <laughs> 10 years in. That's pretty, yeah, that's yeah, pretty solid. It's cool. But yeah. I, I only experienced like cool comedy. And obviously I was starting an open mic scene. So it was fun. But like 2015 or 16, when it switched, when everybody got political, shit really sucked. Like the, all of a sudden, everything kind of sucked. I moved to New York for one year. Shit was cool. But that was just because I was getting things and everybody yeah. was nice. And then, I don't know. I don't know. I, comedy's always kind of been gay for me. Like, everybody I've always been around has kind of been gay for the last five years. So, at least half my... And that was all during my actual career. You know what right, I mean? Right, right, right. Yeah, when you weren't an old Michael, you were... Yeah. In the, starting you were starting to do yeah, some stand-up. Working comic, yeah. yeah. It's always been yeah, gay. It's, amazing. it's always been. When you see, like, the minority of people taking what I say is just the right side, which is like, I don't care what they said. I'm not going to weigh out on if it's funny or not. I'm just saying if the guy was going for a laugh, then that's all I got to know. Yeah. And, and you hear com any comic not take that side. You're like, what? And then you hear most comics not take that side. And you're like, what the fuck? Yeah. I mean, I saw Andrew Schulz in a black radio station go, hey, you guys don't get it. He's going for a laugh. And I'm like, why is this voice the minority and not? Yeah the the most obvious take i i don't i don't know what we did i don't know what we did damn good for like, schultz that's sick good for schultz exactly fuck yeah that took and, some and balls like, dude that took some I balls know. Yeah. Uh, yeah in that world for sure but it's like it sh it should just be like yeah of course you're gonna say I know, that. You're unfortunately comic. yeah yeah comics fucking i don't know that's kind of surprised me yeah there's a there's been so many that i was just like and the funny, th the real funny thing is how hypocritical it is when they throw you under the bus. Just like it's like, yo, you're talking shit. All right, yeah. all right. Anyway, usually it comes from a place of insecurity. It's usually people that aren't funny. I've never heard a funny person do that, for the most part. And go, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, all right, I'll say this: I've never heard a person that's still funny do any of that. I have There's here or there, but it's usually like people who already hated me. And so they're like waiting for the chance. But even then, it's still you should go, <laughs> I love, yeah. I'm going to have to fuck this guy. But no, no, no. You guys can't do it for this reason. That's how I felt about uh, a lot of the L.A. guys that got in trouble. I was like, for, I don't know them. I don't give a fuck. Fuck them. I yeah. personally don't give a fuck. But what? take it easy. I'm not. You what, do you mean? what do you mean? Um, what do you mean take it easy? I know what you mean by the L.A. guys. Like, uh... I don't know Callan. Yeah. I don't know Delia. I don't know them. But, like, you can't be LA Times front page accusation people. That's a little much. Am I off subject? I had a couple of drinks. No, no. What, yeah, it's okay. What do you mean? You can't be. You mean they're accusing or they're being accused? You can't. Like, that's fucked up to be. Because these days you're guilty. So yeah. I'm saying if you got a front page article with an accusation, you're guilty. You're just, everybody's mind. you're yeah. just guilty. And that's crazy. Who's, that's like a crime. crazy. That's like a thing we should watch out for. With, <laughs> with like, Delia, especially like with Delia, I he look, wasn't I even gotta, being yeah. accused of anything. And I know like I had a former someone I used to work with and this isn't the reason that we don't work together, but like she's a big feminist and she's like, Hey, I don't even think he did anything wrong. I'm like, well then you got to open your mouth yeah. and say, I don't think he did anything wrong. It's like, ah, no, I'm like, well then you're just fucking over feminists. You're saying we can't go against our own even when we're wrong? That's like, nah, then we're not going to believe. That's like, what did he do? I don't understand. I don't understand what he did. And then immediately Netflix is like, we're pulling everything you had on. We kind of take your episode of Bert's fucking dumb show off. We got to fuck it. You know, they had three good episodes and then they started seeing Netflix's booking ideas come in and you're like, oh, we, oh, Bert and Anthony Anderson go way back. Uh, that like, was a tough one because that was the only one I watched because I was watching it for Jay. For, oh, because I was like, couldn't get a word in? I texted That's, Jay. I was like, yo, how fucking annoying is Anthony Anderson? <laughs> It's like, here's the log line. It's Bert and his friends go camping. He's like, sweet. And you're like, oh, no, no, it's actually not going to be his friends. Just like four of them. And then a bunch of other people that he's never even met. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, but yeah, we're getting, we're getting a little rowdy. This is good. Yeah. <laughs> Fear and shame shit on shit. <laughs> what about potheads? All right. Potheads? I don't, yeah. I don't like weed, so fuck them too. Yeah, I didn't think you did. So... Here's what I don't like about potheads more than anything because I do love weed. The bragging about something that's not even illegal in honestly most countries anymore. 
and you're still yeah. acting like a fucking outlaw. Yeah, I I I just got into coke. I think that <laughs> deserves a little more respect. <laughs> Dude, I think Coke's making a comeback in terms of how cool it is. They're an awful group, and I've gotten to fights with DeRose about this. They're an awful group. He handles it well, but like, it, they're too much, but like, it's cool again. Coke is cool. Coke's cool. Yeah, no <laughs> doubt about that. No Coke doubt cool, about that. Coke's cool, dude. <laughs> you know what Coke heads never do? Wear clothes with Coke designs on it. True. They should turn into that. They should go more like a Coco Leaf. Like, total <laughs> yeah. identity is Coke. <laughs> oh my God. The weed fashion is so fucking dorky. I don't like when some stranger's like, hey, you want some white? And you're like, uh, no, dude, you're fucking. <laughs> I don't want to hang out with you. You're a stranger. <laughs> if you're like, here's a joint, I'm like, thanks, brother. You're fucking true. Red. But true. <sighs> true. Only if somebody the, gave me the meth heads. Yeah. Meth? If somebody gave you Coke, would you do it? Would you like, here, take it for later for your that, own? That's risky. But yes, I'd probably drink my way into zero inhibition. Yes. Dude, if a chick says, hey, want to do some Coke? There's, I mean, almost no chance I don't do Coke. Yeah, yeah that's great. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, but, then, but then there's zero chance that I'm going to have sex. Again, dude, yeah. I told you, dude, I got the hymns or the keeps in me. I got the fats, boners. Definitely, dude. If I I couldn't get hard tonight, if I drink, I can't get hard. Really? Yeah. Even on Trulies? <laughs> Does your vagina well, these, get wet? These I can probably <laughs> jerk off. Like, dude. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I didn't plan on drinking. This is just nice. <laughs> dude, there's certain people I have in here too. I was just up there, so I was like, I fucking don't drink. Whenever I do a skanks, even like uh, when I was in quarantine yeah. and I was like doing skanks like this, um, I was like I don't know, my dad's fucking liquor cabinet and get some scotch. <laughs> yeah, just fucking, it just reminds me of the so, times. Yeah, these are my boys. Let's drink a little. I'm going to name names. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's what people don't understand, and I get it, where it's like, you're on a podcast, you're just talking to friends, and you're like, this is the same conversation we have not with a fucking camera yeah, yeah, right yeah. here. Exactly. So it's same. hard to remember, like, oh, I'm on the record. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can't wait to like be like, wait, does Bert hate me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like I don't. I hope he likes me. I don't know. No, I've already watched Cabin. It's a fucking great show, especially the ones with Tom Segura. Cabin? That was a great Cabin's episode. <laughs> Miss Pat, Cabin. great episode for sure. Never mind. Go watch it. Yeah. Never mind. <laughs> I'm just talking over you. I'm sorry. It's all right. Um, uh, <laughs> it's very funny though. Yo, I've been watching bad comedy specials. <sighs> I've had a marathon going. There's go. some <laughs> wild ones, dude. Yeah. Let's uh, not I name wish I names. could say names. We can't name names. It's too tacky, but like, uh, I want to know. You got to know no. who. That's why I loved. Even you did the podcast at the studio where you can like say something and then you just like. You just like write down a name. You're like, I'm talking about this oh, person. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah, you're yeah, like, yeah. okay, cool. Yeah, she's a fucking idiot. You know, but you don't yeah, have to say yeah. the name, but you have yeah. to know who you're talking about. Fuck, I wish I could. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. Here's what I like to do. And you could yeah. probably do that. You, you've, I'm sure, done this or could easily. Anybody that talks shit on you, especially publicly, it's very fun to just go watch their special and just be like, oh, this even- is this is who I'm worried about? <laughs> like this fucking guy? Yeah. It's very fun. It is fun. Because they stink, dude. <laughs> it's like that's that's why that's why you even. would take that stance. That's why you would take the stance of, well, that was just racist. How dare you? It's like because you're not very good, and so you, you yeah. couldn't see a second layer to it, or you couldn't be like, what's his technique? What's he going for here? It's instead it, you're like, just saying like the Huffington Post's headline and agreeing with it. I don't we're know, supposed to be outsiders, you fucking dorks. Every comedian, listen up. We're outsiders. Fucking. Uh, Unless SNL offers you and then take it. And then be a rich insider. I mean, but. do it, but then, like, at least Che does it well, where he's like, he True. still pokes the bear. He's constantly on there. At least he used to be on Facebook. He is. I don't know. He is. Still, he's like, nyeh, nyeh, nyeh. and then just like. Yeah, I'm, I was always like proud of him. I was like, hey, we're not fucking completely be that that thing they want you to be. Chase is real know? as he can be for sure. Yeah. He is literally past the line of what he should be doing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, be so like, that's hey, good. Dude, um, as your friend, like <laughs> take that down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like, I mean, I agree with you. It's hilarious, but like, <laughs> they're not going to see yeah. it that way. They just won't come after him. It's kind of hilarious. Why do you think that? 
because he's like under six feet tall. They have a problem with short people. <laughs> yeah, they. <laughs> and they're, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I actually think those people have like not a bigger responsibility, but they're more important comedy voices. I hate saying shit like that, but like, so like, when Nick Cannon got fired for fucking going after Jews. I was like, thank God, I can finally, so nobody can say like, well, of course you take this side. I'm like, I, I sh- I'm, now I'm supposed to be offended. I'm telling you I'm not. He's entitled to his fucking opinion. Don't fire him for fucking dumb shit like opening his mouth. Who gives a fuck? It's just a personal opinion. What does I that have to do with this. judging a juggler? First off, I support 100% Nick Cannon. I support every single black Israelite. They're the best. They are literally the best. Yeah. Deshaun they're Jackson. The left wing, they're the left wing conspiracy theorists. They fucking <laughs> rule, dude. There's, yo. Uh, Deshaun Jackson, that's right. He's Deshaun a, Jackson, he's a he was like, yo, here's a, here's a Hitler quote on my Instagram. <laughs> Everyone was like, yo, chill. <laughs> like, dude, he said, no, no, but the quote stands. Like, yeah, but just don't even. <laughs> uh, Jay Electronica, one of my favorite rappers, has yeah. like a whole Black Israelite album out right now. I think it's up for a Grammy, too, which is pretty tight. Wow, um, really? Yeah, that's how weak those pussies are in LA. Yeah. Or whoever does the Grammys, they're like, oh, this is, you guys are the true great. What a great album. Uh huh. <laughs> oh my God. Anyway, that's why I was like, I was like rule. yeah, they do. They do. I love passing them on the street and just going, like, I think you might hate me because I'm Jewish, but I definitely want to hear what you have to say. I'm like, Dude, I'm they, an Israelite too. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> they crush. Nobody's better. They're right out now, there in the corners in New York, just like talking. In America, the funniest Trump, Trump and Black Israelites should go on tour. Easily, <laughs> it would together. be the great. It'd be the true kings of comedy. <laughs> Trump, Black Israelites, and a couple like Alex Jones supporters. <laughs> they can't go after them. They can't go after them because the black it gives them a shield. Yeah. It really does, dude. They got mad at me for calling a guy who admitted to having raped someone, a rapist, more recently than Brian Callen was accused of and denies it. <laughs> like that was five <laughs> years earlier and people are like, no, he's redeemed himself, but that guy sucks. And I'm like, what are you guys talking about? What's the, what's the key difference here? Yeah. Um, yeah. Wow. Wait, that was something I was gonna say before, but then I forgot fucking what we were talking about. I don't know, we're fucking up, dude. This is probably a mistake. <laughs> Could be. I'm already out. Yeah, whatever. I think we both are. <laughs> yeah. It is a freeing. You ever hear Norm McDonald talking about losing all his money in in uh, in gambling? And he yeah, goes yeah. like, "It's uh, you're clean. It's a clean feeling. You've lost all your money. You got to start from scratch." I feel like every time I get in super trouble, it's just like for a little bit, it's like, "Oh fuck!" But there's a pit in your stomach and stuff. And then afterwards, you're like, "Well, now you guys are powerless." I can yeah. do whatever I want. You That's been nice. I'm finally, uh, I'm finally hitting that stride. It took longer than I thought it would, but I, it definitely the last the last couple months I've just been fully like Having this fun. is actually pretty cool. For and a while it sucked. All, I mean, I talked to the, somebody at Netflix was asking me about you how you're doing, and it was like they were concerned. I mean, I have told you this or not? They're concerned that this happens a lot where you see somebody taking a, a attack and they go their whole identity is going back against the attack. Sure. Which that shouldn't be because they didn't care about the attack. It just came at them yeah. from a bunch of people who didn't know them. So why yeah. are you responding to people who were never going to come see a show and never were? But I was like, nah. His first like joke joke I remember coming back is talking about how funny it would be if Trump got assassinated. And they're like, <laughs> yeah. and then like, I don't know. He's just like still doing like kind of both sides stuff. He's kind of, he hasn't really done anything new. <laughs> you, were, you were more like, yeah, yeah he's kind of the, the old same show. exact material. <laughs> <laughs> which hurts me more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, ah, he's got a routine, dude. He's worked on cruise ships. He ain't going to change it just because of this. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that bothered the fuck out of me. That bothered the fuck out of me because the same what? people, so like all the same industry people, I had that conversation with, I forget who they were with. I think it was one of my old agents. I saw him at a club and they Your were like, agents dropped you? Yeah, UTA dropped me. But I'm sitting there and That's like, who put out the press statement to keep Tim. Fuck you, I think I might be wrong. I might be wrong. They kept they kept Jussie Smollett after they fired me. Just saying, but they they really stand by BLM. By the way, (laughs) they fucking mean it, dude. They weren't just that wasn't lip service. They're all in. Wow, wow. uh, I remember he was at. uh, Oh, I know what I was gonna say. But go ahead. Bad time. Fat black pussy cat. 
they were it was there and it was one of these guys I, I don't I'm not sure if it was with UTA but anyway it was the same thing they were like you're not like you're not like going like all right are you like they said that they were like how are you and I was like I'm I'm doing all right I'm you know I'm working again and then they were like are you are you doing like right wings like they asked if I was going right wing and I was just like yo fuck you and just walked away I literally I was like yo fuck really? you yeah because I it was, love it. It was I like, love how like how you don't beat around the bush with people that have wronged you I'm always like I don't want the conflicts I'm like okay cool but you're just like hey go fuck yourself I yeah, saw what well, you said this, <laughs> is, no, this is this is these like they're part of the reason I got canceled like it's an industry person being like it was like uh ah fuck it Nikki uh was she, <laughs> Glazer did Howard Stern and talked about how I should be fired and then what? the next yeah and then the next no. time I saw her she was like have you seen, like, have you gotten help? Are you going to get help? Like, and I was like, help with what? Who are these people? Like, like she was like, it's like PT, like, yeah, she's like, it. I was like, you were, weren't you just on Howard Stern saying I deserve to be fired? Wow. Yeah, I don't know. It's a crazy word. I delete that part. Word? I shouldn't have said her fucking name, whatever. But. I'll delete it. I actually, I don't give a fuck. Okay, I won't. <laughs> Throw um, it up. What was her reasoning? What? I never understood I don't know. I don't know her. That. I don't know her. It's just like uh, comedians, all of you. It's not about if, anyone who said anything specific. Yeah. Why would you? Uh, you've you've had a joke been walked out on. Every one of you has had somebody go, "I don't like this," and walked out. You understand how some people wouldn't get it. You understand how you've seen news articles written uh, about anything in the world that you later found out was like, "Oh, there's more to this." Why would you ever weigh in on the side of? Uh, an artist trying to make a joke or, or create a piece. It's it's nuts. Oh shit! Yeah, I was I was in this room. This is where I said it. <laughs> oh really? Yeah, it was right here. <laughs> yeah, you signed the wall. It's very funny. I was like, oh, this is where I got canceled. The I got canceled right there. <laughs> Dude, I gotta be honest because I was like planning this today and like whatever. Like, okay, we'll get in my times and shit. And I was remembering uh, that set that night that you were like officially fired. Oh yeah, oh, that was that was so fun. That was what oh, year was, was this? Cool, what year man. was it? What what year was it? What month was it? What, then what year, dude? One year ago, I got canceled. Twenty nineteen. Yeah, I got canceled in summertime. It was warm enough. I don't, no, I don't it was know. Uh, September twelfth last year. September twelfth. Because I got I got told on nine eleven that I was going to get the job. Lauren Michaels called me on nine eleven and was like, "I'm going to put you on the cast." Nine twelve, they announced it. So they had like. <laughs> That everybody talks about like they should have done their due diligence. They got like they had like fucking five hours to fucking search my history. That's that's crazy. Due diligence yeah. of what? Of searching thousands of hours of footage. Like exactly. what are you talking about? Yeah, but they did get me in like four minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it was like four minutes into the one video I had. I, I remember it yeah. made it wasn't just me. It made a lot of the mainstream comics. I, mainstream is almost like alt now but like I, I don't know man we looked at you getting SNL because uh, you're just a comic you don't do impressions yeah. notwithstanding your Lorne Michaels impression I just heard but like you ever hear me do Louie? <laughs> no <laughs> let's hear it yeah. <laughs> I will bad, yeah. not bad, not bad. Dude, I, I can act. see him saying that <laughs> yeah um, but we were like oh cool a regular stand up comic not since like I don't know Adam Sandler really has a just a stand up comic gotten on SNL and just a regular mainstream guy who's just dirty and a normal club comic like this is cool and then when it went the other way I mean I was on stage and I was just like mad and it didn't yeah. affect me but it's just like this is wrong this is fucking we're supposed to get one over it's like when Pacino or whatever or Pesci got killed yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. like what the fuck what we finally yeah. got one in uh, this is ridiculous yeah I, I i thought that bringing you on stage and just that us was fucking fun. around i it was one of my favorite sets of the year yeah that was i cool. was like yeah ah fuck i forget what, what comic it was but somebody was like yo that was like a. it was cool they're like that was like a moment that was like a cool thing to watch it was like that was cool and uh i remember being like oh that was cool because it nothing had really set in like, it was just yeah. so fucking, sur like, I think walking into that show, like, TMZ was there, and they they were like, Shane, Shane, oh, you just got fired. What's that like? And I was like, yo, it's, it's fucking weird. And, like, walked in. I mean, the whole <laughs> thing was the most surreal. Like, dude, I went, 
I joked about it on like, dude, I, I got fired while I was poor. Like I got canceled poor. Wow. So, yeah. Like, I was like, I was like, they pushed taking, the line back. I was taking like the subway home. Like I was like <laughs> from your firing. Yeah, I was like, it, like people were like checking Popping CNN, the like turnstile. Is that that <laughs> racist? <laughs> like, yeah, it was. Anyway, hey, hey, can I bar- can I borrow the newspaper when you're done? I want to read about myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, oh shit, that's me. I remember, dude. There were several times where I was literally looking at the newspaper on the train and seeing my face when other people were reading it. Pretty crazy. Wow. Yeah, there was several times. There were several times where. Somebody, I would watch someone look at their phone and look at me to check. And, and then and so when like, they looked the back, guy. I was like, and they would laugh. They would laugh because nobody cared. No, nobody everybody really was, cares. Everybody's more excited to meet the guy you're looking at on your phone than being indig- like upset about it. Anyway. You're, yeah. 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 You hear Louis joke about when you see Hitler at signing autographs at the mall? No. <laughs> He's like, let's just say Hitler came back. If he did this in special, if he didn't, I don't know, but I'm just going to paraphrase it. And he goes, uh, let's say Hitler's back and he's signing autographs at the mall. He's Hitler. He just never, I don't know, whatever. Yeah. I don't know. I forget the setup. Time machine or he just never He's definitely going to say, you're not going to get one. You're going to get one. Get one what? Right? Is that the uh, joke? No. And he's signing autographs and you're over there going like, is that fucking Hitler? It's fucking Hitler over there, motherfucker. And you're across the, the hallway at the mall. And like, that's fucking, I can't believe fucking Hitler's here signing autographs. And then you like look at him and he looks at you and he waves and you go like, oh, hey, oh fuck, I waved to him. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. It's that moment where you're like, ah, I don't know. It's a human I'm waving. It's like, you can't help it. You just can't help it. That's just it's like, very funny. Know. Yeah, but I love being on stage with you that night. That was just so fun. I went you yeah, were there and cool. I was like angry about it. And that's what, that's those New York, LA sets that you can't really get on the road where it's just like, I, I've seen it a few times post nine 11 from a couple of people. Nick Thune got fired off a replaced on a, on a, um, it's like a CBS sitcom. And that night he was in the laugh factory just ranting. And I'm like, this is one of those things that yeah. Tignataro, like I just found out I got cancer. It's just like, those are the things that like, I, I don't know, man, like they're just cool. And that was a fun fucking that show. Cool. I, uh, thank God yeah. for the stand. Well, that was a cool... Yeah, the stand fucking rules. The stand is yeah. the club, bro. I love the stand. They, they used to get... The, not this E-Rage, the one like two or three before. Uh, they were getting a bunch of calls for me saying like, you got you to gotta ban him and um, we'll, we'll bomb the place, whatever. And then Emily's taking all these <laughs> calls. And eventually, Chris comes over. It's like, just you're off duty. Just give me the phone. He's like, well, then come down then, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, well, then yeah, come yeah. down. <laughs> yeah, I'll never... I'm going to be on somebody. Fuck you. It's just like he's answering calls all day. I'm like, God, I love this club. Yeah, they're hilarious. They're yeah. nuts. <laughs> they're nuts. Dude. They really are nuts. <laughs> yeah. Oh. oh, here's what I was going to say before. Che and a few other people where it's like, okay, you know who Tulsi Gabbard is? Yeah. She was running for president and she's very like um, anti-war. And normally if you're anti-war, you're like, fuck you coward. You don't know what it's like. And she's like, oh no, I served in the military. Yeah. I've had brothers and sisters, quote unquote, like die in my arms. Like you can't, you can't use that coward card yeah. because I actually was there and you weren't. Um, so when you get like a Michael Che who like they can't quite attack because he's black or Michelle Wolf because they can't quite attack because he's a woman and when they're going on like our side of the line, it's like, cool, you got, you can, I can't do it. You can, yeah. please do it for all of us. Yeah, please. <laughs> yeah. And thank God they are. It's great. Yeah, they are. That is good. And that's, yeah. Yeah. I'm just stopping before saying wild <laughs> shit, dude. I'm so close. The best thing is still like, because you want to be like, that guy's great. That's great. He's like, can I point out one thing about why that person sucks? Even if everyone's like a love fest yeah. about somebody, you're like, yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. Uh, minority Report here. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. just want to say it, but it's like, it's not the right time. Cause no, it's I just realized I was, like, gonna, I was about to be like, no, white guys doing stand up. They're taking the real risk. Like I like had to, <laughs> had to like slow down. I ended no. up saying it. <laughs> you said it, but you uh, whatever. I said I made fun of it. I knew it was wrong. I knew it was inappropriate to say something like that. I I do think what you said like it takes a while, and then you're like coming into your own. Finally, we're like, oh, I guess I just don't care anymore. It yeah. does take a while. You don't want to admit it. I didn't want to admit it. It's like fuck. This is fucking bothering me. It but sucks. But then eventually, it, yeah. it's like yeah. I go back to just like. 
being offensive for fun. That's what it was supposed to be. Yeah. I mean, it's just like, yeah, I always, I always just, yeah. I mean, eventually you move past it where it's like, it's not like you're trying to hold on to anything, but it's like, yeah, I don't know what the fuck I'm saying. It's eventually it gets to the point where you're like, oh yeah, who cares? It's like a breakup. It's like any breakup where it's like for like three months, you're like, yeah, it's like a breakup. Yeah. And especially <laughs> a breakup a when you're like a junior in high school and you look back on it now and you're like, oh, I don't have any yeah. feelings about that anymore. What? Yeah. And then yeah. you get a little, then you get some pussy and you're like, oh shit, never mind. Dude, That's I had a bad Patreon day where is, I was dude. like, Patreon oh, is, Patreon is pussy. You're getting a lot of Patreon. You get some Patreon, Patreon and you're just like, oh, never mind. You just get a head from Patreon and you're like, dude, when you told me about the stress that factory <laughs> that night and I was like, you're getting enough money where you don't have to do ads. I'm like, that is, I, I, that's yeah. all I would want. If my Patreon got big enough where I don't have to do ads, I could be like, I'm free. Well, we probably should be doing ads. Nah. We don't. No, no, no. I yeah. talked to this war reporter and he's like, he won't take ad money because he's so afraid of them going like, we prefer you not do a thing like that. And then have to like have an inner torment about like, I need to report on Kyrgyzstan. I know sure. I could sort of justify why I could report on Yemen instead, <laughs> but it would be <laughs> well, outside my own. This guy's doing like real work. Oh, no, he's in there. He's in the <laughs> trenches. He was like in a Turkish prison and stuff yeah. like uh, next to like insurgents. But like, he just Our like, dilemma I, I can't, is like, I can't, should right. I make fun of George Floyd? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it was like, I had a bad day once. I was like, fuck, this is all shitty. And then I got recognized like three times in the streets of New York. And I'm like, I'm actually doing amazing. In my Shit career. rules. So like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, what are you talking about? Dude, getting, recogni- getting recognized at like a rest stop or something. You're like, bro. I made it. It was all yeah. worth it. <laughs> At the Jersey Turnpike. I'm like, hey, you're like, I'm not now, but yeah, thanks. Yeah, and yeah. Like, Actually, the way you respond is like, fuck you, motherfucker. That's how I respond. Any fan that sees me, like, you piece of shit. <laughs> and then I keep walking. But I just know my, that you made my day. Yeah. I got a new, like, my favorite. Instead of, like, sometimes it's annoying when people, like, want to ask you questions about yourself. Oh, you, what's Matt like in real life? And you're like, oh, yeah, I've yeah. got nowhere to go with this. I get that Joey Diaz. What's Joey Diaz like? I'm like, What's he like? I don't, I don't know. What is my new favorite? (laughs) (laughs) If they want to be like, does he get mad a lot? What's Rogan like? What's he like? I don't know. Fucking Rogan, help. Hi. (laughs) (laughs) Help me, Rogan. Rogan, you're my only hope, dude. That's made me Um, laugh. So, uh, you know, it's funny thinking that if any of those messages to Rogies ever got back to him, it makes me laugh. Think of me being like, Rogan, my life's falling apart, dude. Help. <laughs> just just him like on a hike or something. Like, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> just like hearing it. Like, what? Yeah, true. <laughs> just a droid sending it to him. <laughs> Rogan, Rogi help. Won. Help, Rogan's one. <laughs> You're the only one that can trust. Dude. Oh, my God. I genuinely. Ah, never mind. What? Not that I don't want to talk Rogan, want, dude. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't care. He was like, he just I, likes I literally was sitting in Lord Michael's office talking about getting fired, and I was like, "I'll be on Rogan like this week, dude. I don't care if I get fired." I'm surprised <laughs> you haven't been on there. <laughs> no rogies. <laughs> he had fucking Nimesh Patel from getting booed off stage in Harvard, and That's then not you, even you close to what up to me. Not even close. <laughs> Not even close. Nemesh lost, lost the crowd. Yeah, you yeah. fucking. I lost the country, fucking, dude. I was number yeah. one on Twitter for like a week, dude. I got That's murdered. That's pretty cool. <laughs> it's pretty cool. I mean, it sucks, but it's still pretty cool. It is cool. Yeah. This, yeah. If you're gonna get canceled, recognize how great it is. Why it's impossible to recognize while you're getting canceled, the opportunity you have to say something incredibly funny. Yeah. You know what I envy a certain people like Joey Diaz is like, fuck you. I'm not canceled. You're canceled. I'm like, ah, I wish I would have handled it that way. That would have been a great way. Just fire yeah. back. I'm like, fuck off. Well, I couldn't have, I couldn't have, I couldn't have like tweeted like, no, you guys are fired from SNL. <laughs> <laughs> you could have, it would have been hilarious. The problem no, is true, you're still yeah. trying to hold on to the idea that you, maybe you could be on there. So then it's like, I can't fully go where I want cause I'm not done yet. And then they're like, Hey I man, you yeah. gotta handle this with class. Cause otherwise you'll be done for real, for real. And you're like. It, it takes someone like Diaz. He's like, I've already 
I've already done acting and I'm done with it. Yeah. He, you know, I'll do Sopranos here or there. And it's like, yeah, I'm in this world. I saw Burr at uh, Oddball. He was doing that like conversation with the crowd without them talking. You know, like uh, yeah, uh, yeah, Gaffigan yeah. does the same thing, but Gaffigan has a weird voice. And he was like, he, Burr said something was offensive and he goes, you should be fired. And he goes, fired from what? I don't have a job. Yeah. People pay to come see me and then they, they see me. Yeah. There's no fired. As, as long as I can do stand up. Yeah. That shit rules. Stand up rules. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And now, you know, you're just gonna have to do your own specials and that's cool. That's the way it's headed anyway. It's like a difference of like 40 grand right now for my, you know, from your life. Well, no, I'm saying like if I YouTubed my first special verse, got like a first special on something, of it, you know, like if I got a Comedy Central half hour versus they're done, YouTube, that's not an option anymore. Sure, they yeah. are dead, but say they were still alive and in their prime, a Comedy yeah. Central half hour would have got me how much money? Dude, I'm already it's already so forget that if you do a Netflix 15 on something or just release your own thing on your own YouTube. Yeah. I don't one, it'll be better for your numbers on YouTube. So money wise, you'll bring in more yeah. off that even an hour. And two, literally, I think more people could see it for sure. You, you'll probably get like 2 million people seeing an hour to maybe three as an unknown on, on Netflix and unknown. You mean, you know what I mean? Like not like famous. You can yeah. get that. I mean, Norman got that. Sam Marill got that. Sure. They're also in the unknown level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I would say, you know. So it's like, really, what is the point to have a come and go on a network like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I forget for, the original point, but yeah, as long as we can do stand up, that's all that matters. Yeah, Just put that shit out. Yeah. <laughs> this is a good Dude, episode. I miss New York. I miss New York. I want to be back there getting fucking loaded oh, yeah. and just walking Having the streets. This conversation. It's so fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got Who's more that? booze coming in. Don't give me a oh, water. Really? Don't okay. give me a water. I'm fine. <laughs> There's yeah. no reason not to have a water once every like three drinks. Just guzzle it. Well, all right. Go back to the truly. Drinking white claws, dude. I'll be fine. I already um, said things I'll definitely regret, but fuck it. I, I, I'm they just did, uh, apparently that's what's what? funny is I I'm the one who feels bad like I'll name people that shit on me and I'll be like man I shouldn't have said that they don't give a fuck otherwise they would they have don't. apologized and they never have nobody's ever been like yo sorry I shit on you unless Dude. occasionally they'll be like sorry I sent that tweet and it's like whatever they'll say it privately they'll apologize hey, listen, yeah at least they'll do that and you'll be like great thanks you can you please go correct it yeah. At least take the tweet down. It's still up there. Yeah, yeah, I had yeah. a call. I called a girl. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? And then she's like, well, mm. and then I'm like, okay, great. And then I checked a week later. I'm like, it's still up. Fuck. I'm for, I forget her name. There was one lady who like shit on me like hard. And everyone was like, didn't you just get canceled for N word tweets? And she was like, yeah, but mine's different or something. Uh, They're always like, mine's different. Glitter it's like, it's, something. It's, whatever it's, her fucking shit name is. Yeah. Twitter glitter. Whatever. Yeah. She was like, yo, that guy's a piece of shit. It's like, yo, everybody was like, yo, didn't you just get canceled for saying the N word in tweets? comics stand by you <laughs> because they're like, no, nah, you're not a bad person. Be like, no, but you are a bad person. Like, no, fuck you. No, I know exactly what you're talking about. And it's just fucking bullshit. Yeah. It's fucking bullshit. It's, it's, it's terrible behavior. But here's the deal. The reason you don't like saying people's names is because you know you might be sending someone after them and they don't deserve that. For sure. So it's like... Uh, Dude, I, I called every single person who went after me hard, who has now caught their own scandal. How you doing, man? You okay? I know this can be terrible. I know it's even worse when your friends and colleagues turn against you, and so I'm just checking up on you. <laughs> and not one of them was like, hey, dude, I'm sorry I did that to you. They're all, they all go, hey, thanks. That's really nice of you for checking up on me. And you're like, you can't relate this to yourself at all, huh? <laughs> you don't see yeah, anything yeah, you did yeah, wrong. Yeah. <laughs> ah, fuck them all. I'll just kill them with kindness. That's all you can do. Yeah. Yeah. Because again, if you name them, then they're going to get. Then you're 40, doing the same thing. 40 yeah. tweets that are like, fuck. <laughs> it's like, no, that's not what I want either. But, you know, fuck them. Yeah. Whatever. There's, all, there's that too. Like, eh, go fuck yourself. You do this. I know. It's like, I, was I should say it to their face. That's all. You should say it to their face, which you have to people, which is like, yeah. that's the way you should do it. You got to say it to their face. If you see somebody I, that talks shit, just be like, what? I called a few people. 
I was yeah. like, hey man, listen, we're still friends. Uh, whatever. I wanted to move past it, but I just wanted you to know like what you said on that thing was fucking bullshit and I thought it was terrible. And they were like, what? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I saw it and I fucking hated it. Um, it wasn't okay. We can move past it, but like that was fucking wrong. Shouldn't have done that shit. But, and then it's the only way I can move past it. Otherwise you just harbor it. Yeah, thankfully all my close friends have no money. Otherwise, they might have scrambled to throw me under the bus. Thank God for Legion of Skanks, too. And that whole New York <laughs> crowd. Dude, I, when I had mine, it was like, I got a call from Lewis, like, hey, you should come to Legion of Skanks. I'm like, ah, I, don't, I don't know if I should, whatever. And then he called me back like an hour later or a day later. He's like, hey, I, I, I'm thinking about it more. For sure. You need to come down and come do yeah. Legion of Skanks. You need to come back, get on the horse and like be part of this world. And it was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's plenty of normal people who like fucking support you. Well, none of them that watch Legion of Skanks are normal. That's an excellent point. So don't. That's an excellent point. Don't look for normal people. Yeah. (laughs) But, you know, comedy fans. Sure. People that, yeah, Mm. they care about comedy. Yeah. Did you see, we'll get back into shitting on shit in a second. Did you see when you did get on stage, because people must have been aware of it a little bit, because people go to comedy clubs are aware of the. Yes. You can make a joke about someone being accused of sexual improprieties in the comedy world to a comedy club going audience. You yes. might not be able to do it in, you know, the stand up live in Phoenix, but in a New York, they're sort of comedy savvy. Yeah. Did you feel supported or unsupported or a mixture or whatever by those audiences I when you started coming back? Never once felt unsupported outside of my own head. Like every once in a while, I'd see people whisper. To and each you're other, like, they must be. Yeah, any conversation. Which actually, a lot of the times, at first, it was definitely like, "Yo, that's that, that's that fucking guy." <laughs> like, yeah. a bunch of times, because people would, a lot of times, hosts would fuck with me and be like, "This guy, you may have seen him like on CNN, like something like that." <laughs> yeah, so that yeah, people yeah. in the people in the crowd would be like, "Who?" And then I could see some conversation. Uh, but crazy. no, everybody, even if they're like super liberals or whatever. Not that that's like who I'm against, but like no, no. But they, they're like, the type who, who kind of went against you. But the, it wasn't the sure. comedy club liberals. In comedy person, club liberals like no, no person, we know what this is. I never had a bad set due to that. Everybody was always. In fact, once you joke about it or start doing well, people are just instantly like, "What were we mad at?" <laughs> this guy, like, and I, I talked to some friends that were going through like minor little cancellation. Like a, a tweet about them went kind of bad. Yeah. And, it, and it was like, yo, for a while, you're going to be in your own head that everybody in the audience is thinking about it. No one cares. No one gives a fuck you're the, about you anybody care, other themselves. You care about this more than anybody on earth. And nobody's even thinking about it. You'll be all right. Like, just do stand up. Dude, I, I didn't get to yeah. go up for a day or two because like uh, New York Comedy Club had uh, I had a set like a day or two later I think nothing that day and then a, the next day New York Comic had zero audience so they're like shows canceled yeah. I'm like fuck and then I went to go to the stand there was a, yeah, uh, an all things comedy show <laughs> yeah they had that too like hey there's zero reservations and there's bomb threats so we're just gonna cancel the <laughs> yeah, show I'm yeah. like that's fair and then all things comedy was like hey we sh- you shouldn't come down Me- to the stand and, and the stand was like absolutely come down and then yeah. they were like yeah. oh you can't go on not the stand but the other people were like you can't go I'm like Phew. so I sat there people were leaving going where were you I came to see you and I'm like I, I got came here to late. see you I remember <laughs> when you night. came back on. I came to see. You. Yeah. Well, I went up in the in the 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 stands belly room, uh, whatever it's called, the fucking shitty room. Hey, and good, like, good, this garage. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. And I was like worried because now it's been like three days, and I'm worried. You were there. I was on the downstairs one. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I saw you do the downstairs the first time. That was the second, but it was the same night. Yeah, for sure. And I was like, I got met with like a long ovation. Yeah. from a show I wasn't even on and I'm like oh thank you comedy world <laughs> like you you yeah. understand I'm under attack and you're just supporting me with like it was like a minute long ovation and I'm yeah, like people oh, are excited. cool I did stand up yeah I did stand up that night I did I was on the way to the stand while I got canceled like I left my apartment oh, wow. and on the way there I got a phone call from my agent that was word. like my agent was like did you say chink and I was like I mean, I don't Lots like of times. I don't maybe I was like, I don't no know. way I would say that. Really? I was definitely kidding. Whenever I said it, I would never ever like, there's no part of me that's ever like, man, look at all those. Like, I would just never. 
Also, like, like, even if you really hate Asians, you'd be like, these fucking Asians. You wouldn't use the word chick in that context. Yeah, it's such an I, antiquated way to get me I was mad. Like, I don't. I don't even have. I like like Asians. I like it. <laughs> too much. I like Asians. <laughs> like, I was like, this is not a real problem. And then I got to the stand. Yeah, and uh, I, I did a show that that while that was happening. Wow. Yeah. yeah what a time. Fun Hold time. On, I got to piss. Can I piss? Or yeah, do you sure, want to end piss. the podcast? No, we'll go care. piss. We could. We can do a little I have this more. new I idea care. that I, I want to do. That I, want, I want to have guests do like my Patreon with me. All right, hold for on. Like piss. Twenty minutes. Go piss. Go piss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean this is all be paused. Oh, I have the timer right here. Fuck. <laughs> Buddy, it was great uh, talking to you. You're the man. This was really fun. I was. I did two podcasts today already. Yeah. And oh I was really? Like, dreading this. This was actually really fun. Really? Yeah. I could feel you resisting. You're like, Ugh, when? Oh my God. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> What's the issue? <laughs> no, this is awesome. <laughs> All right, cool. Yeah, Yo, you're the man. I miss you. I'll see you soon. Okay. I'll talk to you later. <laughs>
dun, 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 dun. And Joe Rogan walks through the door of their local gym, wherever you guys work out, crunch. And, uh, and then everyone's like, it's fucking Joe Rogan. He's the man's man. <laughs> and then Joe's like, you, you want a spotter? And you'll be like, fuck yeah, I want a spotter. And then Joe's like, I'll spot you, dude. And then you just, he's just fucking, just helping you lift, you know, just fucking lifting, giving that little fucking extra, you know? And then you're like, want to hang out to this? And he goes, yeah, you want to do some jiu-jitsu? And you're like, yeah, I want to do some jiu-jitsu. And then he's like, uh, you want to talk about fucking some, what some professors have said? <laughs> I get it. He's a fucking influence on people, but I just know it was my fucking idiot friend. So it's weird when everybody quotes him all the time. All right, Herman Payne. Tips for the first time. Nope, terrible yeah, I bet you the weed over there was some trash though. Like, what the fuck? Guys, guys. Can we get off the weed thing and give me a topic to shit on? Tips Herman. for getting over anxiety of macro dosing mushrooms for the first time. Tips for getting over. So you want me to shit on? To, by the way, thank you very much, Shane Gillis, for coming in and talking to me. Everybody go check out his podcasts. Uh, Matt and Shane ruin everything or whatever the fuck it is. Matt and Shane's secret podcast. Um, and again, if you want to hear the continuation of that, go to my Patreon, um, Skeptic Patreon, and we did a whole uh, episode about an arrest story, and it was pretty fucking fun. This guy, I think a guy named Max wrote it in. Um, wait, oh, macrodosing. Yeah, uh, people are too, first of all, here's what I'm gonna shit on. The people who think what microdosing is, wait, did you say macrodosing? That just means taking a big amount of mushrooms. Um, which is like, sure. Oh, tips for getting over it. I get it. Yeah, dude, fucking get over it. It's just mushrooms. You'll never OD on it. Quit being a fucking child and go take some goddamn mushrooms. What's the issue? Microdosing, uh, it's, first of all, nobody does it right. They always do like a small dose. Microdosing is like a tiny, tiny amount where it's like you don't even feel it. Let me take another color. Ari Shafir's on here now. We got a chick. Jeez, like, Ari, yo, we in a good group of like comics and artists. This fucking app is great. Welcome to the app, Ari Shafir. I haven't seen you on here before. I'm a fan. Marissa P, co-host, was up. Skeptic Tank 40. No, 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 no. Damn, I was really hoping the women would step up. That was a terrible one. Oh, um, yeah. Hi, Ari. Great to see you on stereo and these emojis are really pretty fucking good except for they need uh, better face shapes so you can really get it because you kind of have a long drawn out I, horse face I do have know? a long drawn out horse face right. I do have a long drawn out horse face I'll allow it I know what the insult was but you're not wrong why the long face was a common insult I heard about, my, about me why the long face I get it I, I'm oblong remember the show The Oblongs I get it that show was Dead center of what I am. This is kind of fun. Yeah, dude, the next like four weeks, I don't know how we're gonna do it. Th this one's a better one because the topic is shitting on things, but. Go. Okay, then at least shit on the mono list that's been popping up, talk about them, do something with it. The what? Nope. All right, she's here, smoking that motherfucking Chinese shoe. God damn it, you guys. Give me something. Hey, what's going on, man? I'm in the 420 industry. If you want to okay. white label any CBD products or even want your, like a, like a mug with your name on it with uh, like a roasting cereal bowl that you could put weed in uh, and smoke out of, even a mug that you could put weed in and smoke out of and have your coffee out of too. That's interesting. Uh, let me know. Check me out. Add me on Insta. I sent you a follow. Interesting. Why would I put my name on CBD? I'll use CBD but why would I put my name on it? If I'm gonna put my name on a, on a weed, it, it's gotta be weed. <laughs> you, how you smoke that orange chauffeur? Yeah, it costs too much. It doesn't really get you that high. Hey, Ari Schaefer, how's it going? Shafir. Hey, Morris. Fuck the hell, she doesn't matter. Uh, just wanted to know why your partner's mute and she's not talking. Ugh. 
Guys, give me a topic. You don't catch shit, bitch. Is that Miss Pat? <laughs> I need one, more black fans, two, more female fans. I'm a really rock star doing Nope. Give me a topic. Yo, Ari, what's up, man? Yo, like, at the top of my list, so I'm really happy to see you here, brother. <sighs> this is all just way too positive. Oh, dude, is there a fucking sweet sunset right now? I think there is. Oh, there's never a sunset up here. It is food. Hello. Um, yeah, so next week I'm going to tell you what I'm going to have. I'm going to have screeners uh, taking care of fucking idiots like food. Guys, I asked you for a topic or, or, or no. You know what, though? Honestly, for the people who did uh, say something about the weed, that, you, you commented on something I said. That's, that's okay. That's okay. It's too much of it, but I get it. That's okay. More topic to shit on. All you guys are doing is throwing out promos. Give me something. I'm here. We're live on the stereo app. <laughs> I'm here. Fucking give me something. Next week, it's going to be fucking screen shit. For sure. Next week, I'm going to do it on, uh, on stereo. Uh, live on stereo. It actually is fun to be here on stereo. Live. Podcasting directly to the people. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I'll probably do it on, like, Monday, maybe? Monday or Tuesday. We'll see. No, I think it's true. If, she doesn't, um, if she doesn't get involved, I think you'll lose your numbers on here. Numbers? Give me... Why are you guys all worried about playing by the rules? She's just here to moderate so I can fucking do a one-man thing. Do you ever see somebody tell on people? Like, be mad that someone else is not playing by the rules? Have you ever seen that? Um, recording, Becky. Um... Yeah, it's annoying. And I've been there too, where you just get like, uh, that guy's not doing it right. That's what being a Karen is, right? Dude, I talked to my friend about being a Karen because uh, she's a bit of one. I don't know if I've mentioned this before or not, but so she said she was in New York and somebody was in a hardware store without a mask on. And the guy behind the counter or whatever, the, the helper guy wasn't behind the counter, also had his mask down and she goes, hey, you need to put your mask up. And he goes, oh, sorry, sorry. And she was like, well, why'd you even have it down? You can't have it down at all. And he goes, you're right, you're right, sorry. And she, goes, and she goes, and why is that person's mask off? And I get it. You just get sick of telling people over and over again, you need to wear a mask, you need to wear a mask. By the way, in this country, nobody doesn't wear a mask. It's a $100 ticket. Nobody doesn't wear a mask. They wear a mask when they're fucking driving. It just, you get, everybody here got used to it. It's just not a thing. Um, walking outside, people wear a mask. It's like... It's, it's not that big a deal. Um, anyway, so she's like, do you need to tell? And he's like, you're right, you're right, you're right. And he went, it's like, hey, sir, or ma'am, whatever, you got to put your mask on. And then she was telling me that. I was like, yeah, good, good for you. And then I was like, hey, are you concerned at all with being called a Karen? And she was like, yes, actually, I, I am. Um, sweet. And uh, I was like, what do you do about it? She goes, well, I don't know. I mean, I read the blogs, I read the fucking articles in HuffPo and shit about, about being a Karen. I see the people calling uh, the cops on, on black kids because they're having a fucking, uh, you know, a cookout where they shouldn't on a day they shouldn't or something. And she goes, part of me goes, am I that problem? And the other part of me goes like, you're not doing it right. You, you got to do it right. You're, you're not playing by the rules. And guys, I, I see both sides of it. The world needs a Karen once in a while. When I see some people fucking up, playing loud music uh, in a park or, or something that's bothering everybody, I'm not gonna go up there and talk to them. But a fucking 30 year old white chick, yeah, you're perfect. You go do it for me. You're a Karen, you gotta use them for good. It's not the fact that they tattletale is the problem. It's that they do it at the wrong time. That's the issue. 
Start shitting on all the zodiac signs. It's always so funny. Yes, thank you. Finally, ah, oh, I wish I saw your name. Banco Beats or something like that. Yeah, dude. Fuck anyone who's into astronomy. And it's okay if you're into it as a joke. But to pretend like you really know, oh, Aquarius is always like this. They're cold. They don't make, they make good friends, but only rarely. Whenever, okay, here's what you gotta do. Whenever you have someone who goes, uh, what's your sign? Like after you say, after you like talk, like, hey, what's your sign? Don't say, I'm a Capricorn. Because no matter what you say, they're gonna go, I knew it. It's not the way to handle it. Here's how you handle it. You go, uh, why don't you guess what my sign is based on what you know of me? And then there's a one in 12 chance we're gonna get it. So they're probably not gonna get it. And then you just go, no, you're wrong. It's not that. And then they'll make a second guess. And you might, there's a one in 11 chance that they'll get it that time. And you'll probably go, no, you're wrong. And they'll guess again. And there's a one in 10 chance. And then they might get it by then. And then they'll be like, oh, I knew it. But, but no, you didn't know it. Also, you're not an expert. You know who's an expert? The fucking shaman from Egypt who read the stars. You, you read three articles about it. God, those people are fucking annoying. What's more annoying? Zodiac people? Vegans? Uh, political people? Do I have any notes in here from Shane? Guys, make sure to tell Shane that you liked the episode. Oh, six and jump. Shane. Pause, 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 pause. Um, political, who else is the most annoying people? Where you just meet them and you're just like, ugh, go away. Vegan vegetarians are bad, the militant ones. I worked with the chick once who used to drive by Ralph's supermarkets and she would roll down a window to yell out murderers. I want to shit on comedians that talk shit about dead sports stars. Okay, that's a great quote, D. Jackson, 44. Comedians talk shit about dead sports stars, which is a lot of them. Um, yeah, I guess um, I would say instead, why do you think sports stars are more deserving of respect than anyone else? Could it be that you're a fucking cock for sports and you think they're more important than any other life? Dude, I love that fucking Kobe Bryant thing where people are like, it's not that, it's his daughter. It's the fact that a little girl was on the plane. I was like, uh-huh. And do you know who else on the, was on that helicopter? Seven other people and two other little girls. And, and none of you remember their names, you fucking phonies. I get it. You're a fan of the fucking sixth best Laker of all time. Idiot. Holy shit, it's my favorite. Nope. We're not doing that. What is this even about? <laughs> Guys, uh, this stereo thing is weird, but uh, we need a screener next time. Um, hi. Nope. Nope. Skyboy's done. Will you please shit on rise and grind culture and... Joe Rogan told me to say that. Bye. Rise in grand culture? Fuck, I wish I knew what that meant. Would you please shit on rise in grand culture? Should I look this up? Would you please shit on rise in grand culture? Nah. Do you think that having a fetish for people with disabilities is a turn on or a turn off? Like, would you fuck a bitch in a wheelchair, yes or no? Okay, first of all, I don't approve of that word. It's not wheelchair. It's a uh, walking assistance, wheeled walking assistant. Um, yeah, okay, so that's a good question. There's a good topic, whoever your name is. It, it's not, okay, it's not, a, I wouldn't call it a fetish of mine because it's not something I think about. What I would call it is sort of a checkbox. Would I fuck a chick in a wheelchair? So that's, you're really asking two questions. Number one, you're saying, would I fuck someone who can't walk? Or is it number two, are you saying, would I fuck a chick in a wheelchair? Would I go on a wheelchair and fuck her? Now, here's the issue. How would you do it? It's like fucking in the front seat of a car. How are you gonna do it? It's, it first of all, it's gotta be a passenger seat. You gotta be a passenger seat. If it's not passenger seat, you're, you're boned. Um, the answer is yes, I obviously would. Would you lift her up and let her fucking little, uh, like, you know, flop legs, just kind of like weather vein it around? Oh, that's a pretty good impression of fucking dead legs. <laughs> I wish you guys could see the YouTube right now. Um, yeah, you lift her up, let her fucking puppet legs, flop, and then just like sit her down on you. Yeah. 
Yeah, for sure I'd be into that. Or do you let her stay in the wheelchair and you get, yeah, that'd be really hard. I mean, I guess you could get on your knees and just sort of bring her forward. Do, do wheelchairs, do they recline? That would make it a lot easier. They probably don't, which is a shortcoming of the wheelchair. And anyone who works in the wheelchair industry just gave you a great tip to fucking corner the market. Yeah, who wouldn't fucking check it out? First of all, how often do they get laid? Not that often. Not that often. So you're doing a service to, to the fucking, to the people who are disabled. You know, you, you can go get them groceries all you want, but they need a good dicking. God, what if you couldn't get hard though? That would be a problem. If, if you're trying to fuck a chick in a wheelchair and then you just like can't get hard. You, you know how sometimes you, you, try, you try to fuck and then you don't get hard and they're like, is it me? And you're like, no, 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 it's not you. Or they go like, what the fuck's your problem? Which is like not the best answer because then it's over. Uh, like there's no way I'm going to get admonished and then, unless that's my fetish, there's no way I'm getting hard now. God, how great would it be if that was your fetish? All you had to do is not get a boner and then get yelled at for being a fucking like worthless half man and then you're rock hard. <sighs> it would never fail. It would never fail. Either you're hard or you're not and then they just demean you into getting hard again. Yeah, but if a chick in a wheelchair is like, is it because I'm in a wheelchair? I mean, you'd be like, yeah, obviously. I'm thinking about what I'm doing. Your legs are, you know, you know what I mean? Your legs look like weeping willows. H how am I not gonna, how am I gonna get hard? Of course it's, I mean, I, there was a chance I got hard, but come on. Good question. Stupid fucking Louis. Nope. Okay, can we please Check. shit on Black Friday deals blatantly showing us how much everything is priced up the rest of the year and expecting it to make us happy? KDK comedy. Yeah, Black Friday sucks. It really does. And then they go like, they, they just don't realize that we're slowly starting to move away from a capitalist way of life, you know? And so they're like, normally it's 200 bucks. Today it's 80. And you're like, yeah, why is it normally 200 bucks? You use slave labor on this. Shouldn't it? I mean, you can afford to get it for 80. Why aren't you normally pricing it at 80? You're making a profit at 80. How was Black Friday this year? I wasn't in the country. I didn't see any, were there any tramplings? They must not have been able to do it, right? With COVID? That's one of the negatives of COVID. No, none of those Black Friday videos where you see people like punching each other and screaming and fucking pulling a, a, a shirt or, or holding a fucking microwave box because they're six dollars. I get it. I've had no money before. I get the need to like have a product, but <sighs> damn. You think other countries look at us? And by the way, they had Black Friday here. They don't have Thanksgiving. They had Black Friday in England. They don't have Thanksgiving. They just call it Black Friday for, for just because they're taking the American way. It's so fucking gross. Don't you guys ever just want to get out of the system? Don't you ever want to show up at a fucking store on Black Friday and be like, you waiting for the, uh, the new, you know, giant screen TV for 30 bucks? And you're like, nah. They're like, what are you waiting for? Is it, is, it the, is it the whole stereo system? And you're like, nah. And you're like, uh, what, just general like sales on clothes and stuff? And you're like, nah. And they're like, what are you here for? You're like, I'm torching this place. I'm burning down this fucking target in a show that I am against capitalist as a way of life. Capitalism should not be running how, all right, it's going too much. Good question though. God, it gets me so fucking worked up. Ari Schaefer, you just fucked up. Right? Shafir. Hey man, I loved your joke about the wall with men back in the day. I've been a fan ever since. Thank you. That's what brought me on to you. You're oh. a great comedian. Thank I you. really appreciate your work. That is all. Demas01, that's a terrible suggestion. The last thing I need is fucking real emotional fucking feedback. Where the fuck is that going to go? I know I have this real problem where I can't show like uh, some of my friends are like, oh, he's a good guy. I don't know why I didn't show it. I'm like, what, what do you want me to do? Be fucking serious? You want me to be pleasant on podcasts? You want me to be nice about things? No. When it, when it happens, when Ralphie died and I can't help it and you fucking start tearing up, that shit's fine, whatever. But like, 
You want me to go into it with sincerity? It's gross. I know you guys have seen it from other podcasters. It's fucking awful. Okay. Uh, no, we're not going to give you a topic, but what? Then, then I'm not going to listen to you. I was just about to ask when you're going to have her on here, dude. Who? That would be awesome. Have who on here? Fuck. When are we going to have her on here? Who was I talking about? That you would have said... Have her on here, because that'd be awesome. Hmm, I don't know. You know you will be banned off this live if you're... Daddy Grease. Also, is it okay to smoke meth? Like, just recreationally. Not like being a meth addict, but just like once in a while smoking some meth. I hear you. Uh, I would say absolutely it is. I would say absolutely it is, and it's possibly even preferable to smoke meth once in a while. Obviously do it in a country that, uh, where meth is legal. Um, yeah, dude, I, I don't know. It's like all those drugs. It's like, don't you just want to try them? Right? I, I get the addiction thing. Did I ever tell you my, my so I my thing with heroin? Heroin is the, the biggest of the drugs. Some people say it's meth. I disagree. I disagree. I think it's heroin. I think it's heroin. I think it's the hardest core hard drug there is. Meth is pretty up there, and ice is pretty up there too, but I, I personally, I say heroin. So you wanna do heroin or meth, you can replace this, but you don't wanna get addicted, that's the main issue. You don't wanna get addicted, but you wanna try it, obviously. You wanna try it. You've seen people go back to it, over, lose their whole lives for it. You know it must be good. So I've come up with a way to smoke meth, smoke, sorry, heroin, <laughs> three times, and three times only, so you don't get addicted. And that's it. You wanna do it, okay, so here's number one, you're trying it, you don't know what to expect, okay? Because, the, okay, the, the bottom line is you can't get addicted, you're gonna lose your whole life to it. But you wanna try something. It's like those people who try yoga, and then suddenly it's like their whole life. Yoga with Ari, uh, January challenge, coming. January 1st, 31 day, January challenge for yoga with Ari. Go to my youtube.com slash Ari Shafir for live videos. Um, yeah, every single day, guys. 20 to 30 minute yoga. And half of this, me just fucking around. Um, so here's my way to do it. You can try heroin, but not get it. Three times only. First time, you try it. You don't know what to expect. You're gonna get whatever you're gonna get out of it. It's gonna be great, probably. But you might throw up. That's a fucking common side effect of, of heroin. You might not. But the fact is, you're gonna smoke it. You're gonna feel what it makes you feel. Now you're gonna do it again, a month later, something like that. Two weeks later, maybe the next day. Now you know what you're getting with the heroin. So you're gonna go into it with an idea of like, I know what to expect. Kind of like with mushrooms. The first time you're like, this is fucking nuts. Especially if you're dosed and you don't know what it is. That, ugh, that I can't imagine. It must be terrible to get dosed with a drug. Um, the second time you take it, you, you kind of know what you expect. So you go into it with a fucking full head of, uh, uh, about it where you're like, okay, this is it. And then you go into it and you really enjoy it. You really enjoy it because you, you're not scared. You don't know, it's not like you don't know how deep it's gonna go. You know how deep it's gonna go. You just had it. So that's the second time. And then the third time is when you get horribly addicted. Fuck! Hey, Ari. Ari. Great. I'm wondering if uh, you and Godfrey ever resolved your issues over the whole Kobe Bryant thing. Did me and Godfrey resolve our issues over the Kobe? Yeah, here was the issues. Uh, he, I think he asked everybody to try to hit me or something. And then the next time I saw him at the comedy cellar, he was like, hey man, you know, I don't have any big deal with you. I just like, should I stay online? He's, kind of, he's just kind of an actor. So that's the way he acted. He literally went up to me, he's like, hey bro, like not mad at me at all. And I can't even be mad at him. It's like, okay, so you're just like putting on a show? And he's like, ah, I told you. I was like, okay, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> so yeah, I guess that's the resolution. <laughs> it's like, great. Yeah. Talk about doing comedy during the pandemic and how that's going. Okay, guys, I think we're almost done with this. This stereo thing has been great, but I think we're almost done. Uh, with the topic suggestions. 
It has been fun. But now we're just like, this is like live Q&A. This is shit I'll do on my Patreon. Um, I don't know what else there is to like shit on. Shit on Shane's hairline, which is fucking, but who am I to talk? You want to talk to shit on, man? How about traffic? Shit on traffic. Shit on traffic? Dude, all I will tell you, not to shit on it, but like once I started smoking pot in my car in LA, traffic just became not even a thing. I mean, there were times where in LA it was so bad. It's tough to shit on traffic. I'm, I, I, you know, I'm a New Yorker, so it's like I, I take the subway. Um, it just doesn't, traffic doesn't really bother me much. Um, <laughs> you know who does not take the subway? A big J. Okerson. Every time we wanted, one time we were late to Sirius and, um, uh, to do his, the bonfire show. And uh, we were, I was gonna go with him. He's like, come over to my place, we'll go together. I live, we live in the same neighborhood. And I was like, let's take the subway. He goes, no, no, let's get in a cab, it'll be faster. And I looked on Google Maps, which is always pretty accurate. Uh, and I'm like, no, no, actually, man, it's, it's, there's so much traffic right now. His show starts at 6 p.m. We had to leave at like 5.15, it's rush hour. And I'm like, it's gonna take 45 minutes to get there by car and 28 minutes to get there by subway. So. It's, it's not faster. It's actually faster to take the subway. So should we take the subway? And he's like, um, no, still not. <laughs> I don't know what a steal is. I don't know who's a New Yorker and doesn't take the subway. Even fucking Ke uh, Keanu Reeves takes the subway. Louis C.K. takes the subway up until recently. I don't know if he still does. That was funny as Shane say, like, he would see people on the subway reading articles about him and just like... <laughs> it's so cute that you've come to an app and then you're yelling at us to give you content aren't you supposed to be the content no, creator no, and you're supposed no. to be here consuming it uh -uh. yeah you are asking you're... for a friend no no <laughs> that was a good last line no you're giving me a fucking topic and then i'll give you the content i don't know how else do you do feedback on this app what, what do you want me to do he's uh, like do feedback do like interaction so that's what we're doing I mean, good point. There we go. Talk about shit, not fucking tattletale, bitches. I wish I'd go to the beginning one. Um, is there a way to go to the very beginning? Hey, Ari, what do you think yeah. of people telling on their neighbors or other people when they have large groups and they're going out of orders of people? What do you think about that? Good question. That's a good question. Yeah, there's all this tattletale stuff. It, it's weird how I, I see nobody's talking about the same things anymore. Like literally nobody's talking about the same arguments. They'll talk about like, um, what's his name? Alex Jones. And they'll be like, should he be banned off YouTube? And people are like, well, it's terrible what he did. And like, yeah, but I don't think he should be banned off YouTube. They're like, oh, but it was okay what he did. And the thing is, what, what did he say? Something like one of his conspiracies was uh, one of the school shootings was made up. I don't think it was made up, but I loved it. I hate kids. I hate kids. Love when they die. Um, but he thinks it was made up. So people like, you know, people went over to grieving parents and fucking made fun of them. People who, who lost their children. Now they're getting fucking made fun of. But he's arguing a different thing. He goes, he wouldn't say this out loud, but he would say, no, they're not grieving parents is what I'm saying. I'm saying they're actors. So there's two piece people handle this COVID thing with the large groups. There's like, oh, I don't care. And other people, if it was a thing of like, uh, there's curfews because um, of booze. And you're like, well, I'm having a lock-in. Uh, so we're all drinking. But this ain't hurting anybody. Then you're like, if you tattletale on that, it's like, hey, fuck you. This doesn't even matter to you. I'm doing fucking a bunch of meth with my friends in my basement. Who cares where you're next door neighbor on the ground floor? You don't hear about this. We didn't blow it up. We're not making the meth here. COVID's a little different, right? Because if everyone gathers, then it fucking gets worse. And you could say like, I don't believe in it, but the reality is the more it spreads, the more the economy shuts down. Even if you don't think you're gonna die from it, you know your fucking bally's is not gonna be open. So I don't know. I don't fucking tell on people. I wouldn't do it, but I mean, would you tell on somebody if somebody was like just shooting a gun at like a 20 degree angle up in the air, would you call the cops? Or would you say like, I'm not a tattletale? They're not shooting at you. 
You know, it's not quite the same argument. Everyone's like, let people do what they want. It's like, but it's not quite the same because somebody's going to go to the supermarket now and they're going to be eight times more likely to get COVID than they were before. It's not quite the same. But I also get minding your own fucking business. All right, let's do a couple more of these and then we're live. Uh, we're, we're live on stereo. I think this is pretty fun. Uh, next week for the Joe Rogan episode, we'll do this again Monday, Tuesday, something like that. I might start a language class. Um, so maybe we'll do it at night, maybe Monday or Tuesday. And for that, um, I wonder what we can do. So we don't just have people, I mean, we'll have a screener, but I wonder what, what I should aim you guys for, for doing this. This is fun. The stereo app is fucking cool. Um, oh, I should say this whole thing. This is Ari Shafir and you're listening to S Ari Shafir's Skeptic Tank, live on stereo. Welcome to this live stereo show. If you're just tuning in, we're live, coast to coast on stereo. Um, yeah, I wonder how we'll do it next week. Okay, I know. So next week's the topic is all about cars, automobiles. Um, I would love to call in, leave a short message, 30 second message next week. The first time you got a handy or a blowy in a car. Or maybe what was your first beater car? What was your first car you ever got? Or let me think if that's even, if that's a good idea. Cause then what are you gonna do? I'm just gonna like take interactions. Yeah, maybe, yeah, we'll see. Uh, all right. Whoa, I just saw your page. The 9-11, a person jumping from the building. I can see why you need topics now, buddy. <laughs> Hello? Hi. Hello? Hi. Nope. How about you, uh... No, pretentious OG, you're done. You're wasting your time talking... Are you talking about doing comedy during the pandemic? You already got that one. You need to change your hashtags and stuff to your current topic. Why? That will help get some folks in here with um, with what you're wanting. Just FYI, fuck off and Joe Rogan sent me. No, I love you. I mean, I don't even know. Bye. You gotta be kidding me. You don't approve of the word wheelchair, but you approve of the word yes, F. Yes, The F bomb and bitch. Yeah, I'm kidding. For real? No, not for real. I'm kidding. That's wrong, brother. <sighs> Just as a rule of thumb, you guys, whenever you hear a comedian say anything that seems ridiculous or wrong or evil or, or, or like, what the fuck? I mean, if you don't immediately go to, oh, they're a comedian, they're probably just joking. And if you're like, what's the joke? You're like, the joke is saying ridiculous things or sometimes very funny. I, I don't know how else to explain it to you. Not every joke has a why the chicken crossed the road to get to the other side. Not all jokes are in that form. I, I don't know. You've seen a, you ever seen a, like a physical comic? They don't even have punchlines, but they get laughs. I, I don't know what to tell you, but they're joking. <laughs> Maybe you know too. Usually when I fuck a chick, she can't walk. So I guess they end up in a wheelchair. So I guess, yeah, that's a thing. Yeah, you had to follow it up. That was funny, though. Um, guys, I think we're done. I think we fucking nailed it. This has been Ari Shafir's Skeptic Tank, episode 409. Now I want to fuck a chick in a wheelchair. Thank you, Stereo, the Stereo app. Guys, sign up for it. Get in there, and, uh, and um, I'm sure at some point I'll do one where I'll just, like, actually talk to different people. Just keep, there's an app, there's a, there's a way on here to just keep flipping so you just actually talk live to new people. Um, I'll try that at some point, but not today. Oh my God, Ari's on stereo. Yeah? I was just watching your shit on YouTube, man. You ever, you ever see somebody write a comment on YouTube and, and, and you look at the comment and you're just like, why did you even click on the box that says leave a comment. Why would you even click there to, for this nothing drivel of a, like you'll see a, I don't know, kitten playing with a puppy. And, th and then you write, um, I, I love puppies. And, and I, I see those sometimes, it's fun to look at YouTube comments because people writing them are, I mean, <laughs> it takes a special breed. I've done it three or four times. It takes a special breed to go in there and be like, 
I'm going to follow up on this. But to be like, oh, I love puppies. He's like, uh, okay. Not, I had the same dog when I was little. He got run over and I cried as his guts spilled out into the street. Something like that. That's a fun one. That's a fun one. You ever see the uh, Amazon thing with the, with the wolves? T-shirt with the wolves on it? You got to look it up. It's just like Amazon caught it. Everyone's doing these like three page long um, reviews of this stuff and how it made them remember their family, stuff like that. I love, I, I like to leave comments like, like uh, Google, um, Gmail, not Gmail, Gmaps, Google Maps, come on Ari. Um, I just leave like small places like a post office on like Malta, on the small island of Malta and just write a long review of it because they have no reviews and now they have one. Guys, I think we're done. D Jackson, D Jackson, D Jackson, D Jackson, go ahead. Funny at all. So I mean, this is what I'm talking about. At fucking all. So you're coming in here. <laughs> you're letting me occupy space in your brain to follow up. That's the second one he left. To follow up, to be like, why I don't like you. <laughs> Can you imagine going to this fucking Chevy headquarters and be like, your new cars aren't good. <laughs> it's like, just go, why aren't, the, why aren't you the Honda dealer? Oh, that's so great. Um, <laughs> Your legs look like leaping willows. Okay, I joined this late, and I'm so sorry to headphone users for my cackle. But are we talking about unshaved, like, <laughs> no. thighs? No, we're not talking about unshaved thighs. From a coochie? Because, damn, weeping willows are my favorite tree. I will never look at them the same again. Oh. <laughs> no, she's going to be mad when she hears the final thing and she realizes we're talking about. Uh, dead handicapped legs. All right, guys, I think we're done. I think we're done. This has been cool. Thank you very much for the Stereo app for, for sponsoring this. Uh, I, again, I tell you three of the next four or three of the next five episodes uh, will be like this. We'll be doing live. We, I, will be doing live um, intros and outros. This is going to be great. Joe Rogan's the next episode. Um, it's all about cars. So I don't know. Think of a short 30 second interesting thing about, I don't wonder what to go, go, the car wreck? I don't know. I'll figure it out. I'll talk about it during the intro. Um, tell you what to put in for the, for the outro. So thank you very much for tuning in. This has been fun. Thank you, Shane, uh, for, for, for taking the time and, and drinking your Trulies with me as I drink my Johnny Walker. Uh, fun fucking podcast, dude. Um, don't forget to check out his podcast, Matt and Shane's Secret Podcast. Um, if you want to hear the rest of it, go to my Patreon, patreon.com slash Ari Shafir. Um, sign up for YouTube, uh, where you can see all the live videos. And I don't know what else. I don't know what else. It's a... Uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you, guys. Have a good day. Enjoy the rest of your virus.